pause recording. We are ready. Okay, well, it is 2.30. Uh, uh, Eric, who's on this committee, and he was on it last year too, uh, was unable to make it today. Um, since this is your first meeting of the year, uh, your first item is to, is to select the chairperson and vice chair. Okay. Uh, I'll chair. All right. And since you've got the, the board meeting, so I'll, I'll go ahead and chair. Okay. So, um, so we'll call the order, uh, the meeting to order for the administrative and finance committee. Um, so if we can have uh, the minutes reflect um, those present in the room. Um, I don't believe we have anyone on the Zoom call. Okay, so, and there's no public in the room. Um, so the first item on the agenda, we completed that. Um, and uh, second item is the other host employee uh, employment Benefits, uh, OPEP, um, which is the California Retiree um, Benefit Trust uh, update. And so I'll turn it over to staff to provide that update. Yeah, I, um, I just, uh, Natalie and I participated in, in an overview or a summary of our, uh, the trust in our portfolio and, and how we're doing a couple months ago or, uh, or some, some time back. And it was pretty detailed. It was like probably an hour long uh, presentation, but there were some uh, some pieces in there that I thought the committee should be aware of, particularly as we as we think about how we're doing uh, in, um, relative to our our liabilities, how the how our investments are doing, or how much money we have in the trust compared to liabilities, because it can fluctuate. So I just pulled out without going. I didn't want to. I, I didn't think you'd have the appetite to go through the whole thing. So we pulled out just some select slides. Uh, you can see this, that was just the home slide. This is this, this was, we're, so we're skipping a bunch to slide five. This is just an overview of, uh, it shows like our progress through the years, the years that we made contributions. Uh, um, remember, we kind of tried to get fully, fully paid up a couple years ago. And then last fiscal year, uh, so a year, a, a year ago, essentially, we made our first withdrawal from the trust. So these are these are these are contributions by fiscal year, and then we let the fund build up, and then at that time we thought we were fully funded, so we began making withdrawals, and we're scheduled to make another withdrawal this fiscal year at the very end of June. And so when I say withdrawal, we're taking the the um, amount of it's not the maximum amount of money that we can, but we're taking the amount of money that equals the retiree healthcare contributions that we have made to retirees plus our PEMCA minimums to PERS. Um, so we took out $154,000 last year. This year, it'll be a little bit more than that. Um, yeah, yeah it's, it's, it's in the admin fund, what we think it'll be. So like one. So is it covering exactly the amount that we have to pay out? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. A dollar, yes. dollar to dollar. There's yeah. actually a way to get okay. more because um, there's some, uh, some yeah. assumed yeah. subsidies through in this yeah, system, but, but um, we yeah. haven't begin withdrawing those and I'll, and I'll go, I'll, I can tell you kind of why. I mean, that's, there's yeah, so it's 189 that we're going to take this year. Because there's more, there's more people who retired and the, and the health insurance costs have gone up. So, but this, this shows our, our cumulative net contributions, the investments, the earnings. So this was through 2024. We had made about $400,000 in gains. There's the, here's the cost of the fees per the cumulative fees since the beginning of time, um, et cetera. So this was just sort of a quick snapshot. And those, uh, oh, can go, those fees, are those based on how much we have invested? Yes. Because, yeah, okay. So. But they're uh, cumulative though. Yeah. Well, because I know, yeah, because I noticed it's increased quite a bit since initially, but it's, so I'm assuming. Yeah, so I think at the beginning of the year time, we only had 192000 in there, see? So yeah. Yeah, so, so it's so. not a flat fee. No. It's based on the amount that we have in the portfolio. Yes. Well, is it that, or is it just the adding 1800 Oh, yeah, no. because it says cumulative. This is, yeah. yeah, this is cumulative. This is what we paid in total, because we didn't make $400,000 this one year. This is what we made. So, so, it, yeah. so it's not that we paid twelve thousand for this year; it's twelve thousand total. Oh. It's two thousand and eighteen. Oh. 
year. I think that's that for that year. No, no, no. Since oh, so 2018. It's cumulative. since 2018. Okay. So is it based on how how is that fee? Because that's the fee for ministering this. Uh, or yeah, yes, there is a our contract with PERS shows us how it's calculated. I don't have that information. But is it so it's based on how much we have in the portfolio or is it a flat fee? It's an administrative fee. I was thinking it's, about it's, 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 a, it's, a, it's a percentage. It's a, oh, oh, it's a flat fee. Okay, that's that's fine. So, we can take that offline. I'm just curious. We, I can figure find out what it is. Um, so this is really the probably the important uh, piece of information here. This funded status, if you recall, our strategic financial policies um, had us kind of ramping up over time. We were making investments based on our, the funded status, and then we decided to try to become fully fully funded. So we made you know further contributions. And then a couple of years ago, we got this actuarial report that said, hey, we were like essentially 97% or nearly fully funded. And at the time, um, we were, we, we actually, we didn't talk to, we talked to the actuary, not to PERS. And the actuary said, based on the data that they looked at, she didn't recommend making additional contributions. And, and keep in mind that unlike other investments where money can come and go, because this is a specific trust, we can only withdraw it for certain reasons. Mm -hmm. And so if you, if we had continued to fund money beyond hundred percent, you might have that money locked up for decades. And so we were we were cautious not to over invest due to, due to the loss of liquidity. Um, it's sort of stuck in there. It would have kept earning interest and stuff, but it could be stuck in there. So we stopped making uh, investments when we thought we were fully funded. But just hold on to that because the data becomes quite. It's kind of old when we look at it. It's already a year old. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> um, and so, um, just a, a reminder. This program allows us to, we're in the sort of uh, middle tier. Um, you know, with, that was a choice we made when we started the program. It was the most aggressive tier, a middle tier, and maybe the most conservative tier. We're in the middle tier. Um, and um, we're using this, uh, this, here's this, 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 we're using, we're withdrawing the pay as you go or the money that we spent. We're also eligible to withdraw this, what's called implicit subsidy. Uh, which purse provides a calculation for us to take out, but we have not done so. If we got to a point where we were beyond 100% funded, let's say that number comes back and it turns out that we're like 110% funded, it might make sense to begin pulling that money out, the implicit subsidy, so you can get that, uh, uh, that'd be a tool that's available to to us. It's it's not a significantly, here, for, for, that, for that year, for the current year, it would be about another 22,000 bucks. And, and so if it's pulled out of the trust, then um, we would be able to use those funds for anything else? Well, it's an exact, oh, you mean the 22,000? Yeah. yeah, yeah. it would go back to yeah. the admin fund. Okay, it goes back to the admin yeah. fund. Okay, yeah, that, because we didn't have our discretion in terms of how those. Yeah, I mean, we're not talking about a lot of money. No, and no. I'll, get to why, I'll get to why it's probably not a consideration right now. Yeah. Uh, um, and then um, uh, we, anyways, what, so this was part of the PERS report, but some of our questions then let, uh, of the PERS uh, representative were like, okay, this is all fine and dandy, but it's really kind of dated information. And we wanted to look at some more current information because he's, he's showing that we're still 97% funded, but we just last year, last July, you can see this is for last July, had another actuarial update by an independent actuary, not PERS. And all this, all these reports go to PERS. And... Um, and using that information, you can see that the funding, um, when they compared our funding percentages from 2022, there's where the 97% comes from right here. This is based on data from a year prior. Um, that we were 97%, and then look, a year later, June 30th, 2023, we're, we're down to 82%. And that has almost nothing to do with our contributions or withdrawals, although we did withdraw funds. And, and everything to do with the investment earnings mm -hmm. at the trust. And so th there's a lot of, there's more volatility here than, you know, maybe you, maybe we would be accustomed to because the trust can lose money uh, and, or its interest earnings can fall and, and it has done so. You know, it's been a kind of a volatile period, this sort of COVID investment uh, period. 
And so we began asking, you know, PERS, I said, okay, look, if this is the, the right now, this is the most current information we have. We're going to do an update to this uh, as a part of the. Team. So yeah. even though it's for fiscal year ending June 30th, 2023, it's really based upon the fund performance for 2022, correct? It's really for, current. For the prior year. Based off of. Um, like payroll figures and everything, or retirement figures, but health insurance figures from the year prior. Yeah. So, because there's a lag time right. for them to do that. And I actually tried to do some research to say, is there a kind of a standard or a recommendation in terms of what that um, funded liability should be at? Is there a percentage that should so be? That's what we, we, be, that's what we wanted to talk about. What I found is, I couldn't find one. Okay, so that's what we that's what we spent time talking to person about. Yeah. So when we talking to uh, basically, there is no no employers handling it all the same way. There's no perfect answer. It's up to us. But because we're so small and our numbers are so small, we're you know we're only talking about fifteen or so retirees right now, or less than that right now, and uh, you know we're going to have a lot more volatility because because the pool is so small that um, and um, this. Because this figure dipped so dramatically, it was like actually it was pretty concerning last year when we got these figures. Is should we start recontributing? Should we be talking? Because the reason I'm having this discussion with you now is because it, if we wanted to dump more money into it, it would have an effect on the on next year's budget. Right? We'd have to plan for it. And in talking to Purs, he says, "Look, you're going to expect some. You need to be prepared for some volatility. These numbers are going to bounce around from year to year. And so, what you know, I think what I suggest is, is waiting to see if there's a pattern that develops. If we're, you know, 97%, we considered ourselves essentially fully funded, did not want to put more money into it. But now we're at 80, you know, 82% or 83, maybe if you round that up, um, that's quite a bit lower. It doesn't sound like fully funded, but what PERS recommended was we wait until the next data set comes out. And if we're, at, if, if this is going to remain low for a couple of years, then it's time to start looking at, at making additional contributions because we won't have enough. Yeah. But uh, the investments uh, can, you know, they're going to go up and down. And um, so, so if we do get, or oh, if we want near that hundred percent mark, um, does it make sense to, because you said most of this, the reduction is from the volatility from our investment. So does it make sense if we're at close to 100% to make sure it's not volatile anymore and like pull that, well, that money and well, that was, in a that was, safer? Well, that was one of the options was we could move it from, we, we could move it from um, tier, two. tier two to th tier three or the, a, a more conservative, there would be less volatility. But look, we just lost all of it. Yeah, you know, so lost. it kind of seems like a bad, it may not be the best time no. to consider that because we're you're like selling low yeah, instead of selling high. Well, and this is kind of a long-term strategy. Absolutely. Yeah. This isn't a short term. So I think looking at just year to year, we are going to see that volatility, but this well, is a long term. Well, no, I mean, uh, well, I'm saying, I mean, it, it shouldn't necessarily be long term. If we get to the 100% of what we need, our, our liability then, we, we, well, we, we but then the, but the so market what's going to happen is though. if we move the if we move the investment, the forecast for earnings is going to reduce, and that calculation is going to go down. Okay, so that's so it there's is, a discount rate that's applied here too. So okay. you have to consider all those factors. But um, two things happened: one, there was volatility in the investment pool. This, um, I don't think anything happened to our actuarial assumptions regarding to our regarding employee employee pool. That wasn't that didn't change much. But healthcare costs have also gone up That's a lot that, faster yeah. than so they had historically, months. and I think that had an influence on this too. So anyway, we're going to have another version of this to to share with you soon, and we're going to look for this pattern. I think if next year's, if this comes next time down to something like, if it doesn't rebound a bit, I think it's time to start talking about making more investments. So when should we see this again? A couple months. In July, by July? Yeah. Well, this was dated last time, July. July. So, so all so I'll probably send everything in at the end of May, and it usually takes some six to seven weeks to turn it around. Okay. So we could make it mid-year or something. Sure, or just plan it for the following year. Yeah. Again, this is this is like a 40-year 
yeah. 50 year plan, right? Yeah. You know, you're setting aside money for people who haven't even retired yet yeah. into this investment pool. And then of course we're withdrawing money for people who have retired uh, as well. So, um, so that's another question is that I know we thought we were at hundred percent. That's why we, we lose some money. I mean, should we consider not doing that at least for a little while longer and not withdraw the money? And I know I think at least I think the first advice is don't overreact based on what Davis said. Look for a pattern. Look for uh, because there's going to be volatility. This could bounce back and be okay. Okay. Uh, uh, but and that's something you could consider. So there's two two options here. I guess mm -hmm. you could consider investing more money or taking out less yes. or both. Or uh, yeah, or partially yeah. meet like the hundred eighty thousand only maybe. Take out hundred thousand. Well, well, maybe going with that subsidy, not taking the subsidy out. Yeah, we're not doing right. That's so, we haven't done. I think we just need to hold off on doing that because we've got that volatility. And I, I'm inclined to say let's not over contribute, but let's not take out that subsidy that we would be allowed to. Um, I think we just leave it um, as is right now. Yeah, and I think he what what the PERS uh, representative was more indicating is like you're going to bounce around a little bit. Don't worry about one piece of information, you know, and anything, maybe anything in the nineties, you, you should be very happy with, you know, we don't want to end up with more than a hundred percent because then you could be locking up your money longer than you'd like. But, um, well, we're looking back too. who's to say that what these investments are have sure. leveled out some. Yeah. I don't know. You're right. So we're going to see, uh, in just a couple of months where this goes. So we wanted to bring this to your attention and we will certainly share the next version with you, this all goes to our auditors. It feeds the financial statements. That's why it's done. Yeah. Uh, but um, it's it's helpful to, to get it. It just it, I, I didn't. This is that's more volatility yeah. than you know I, I I would have expected. Yeah, and I I was even surprised that Gatsby doesn't say you know how much you should be setting aside for this. It just says you should be. You have to record the liability. But but, but it doesn't say how much. Well, and yeah. even in other states too. So it was quite interesting in doing some research on this. It's like you would think that there would be some recommendation, but there's not. So it's kind of like a reserve study. You know, a reserve study will tell you, well, this is how much you should be setting aside. If you, um, go, yeah. if you go back to the, I mean, uh, you know, just right where you were. Uh, so it does say, uh, so the total uh, liability for 22 was. Three million four hundred fifty-three thousand, and now it's three million five hundred sixty-three. So that's another, you know, that's a hundred thousand dollar in terms of liability that's gone up. Is that just because of increased healthcare cost? Um, All right. yeah. Yes, and you know, our employment pool grow, has grown. You, every time you add a full-time, even though new employees don't have a, a, a significant uh, benefit after retirement. They still get the Pemka minimum, and so there's assumptions made about which of these employees are going to retire from here, and uh, you know, etc. So, so, so that's something good to know. Is like it seems like our liability is just goes up, you know, year over year too. So, I, th I think that will continue least, until we hit a point where where some of our retired folks, uh, unfortunately, uh, reach the end of their horizontal. Yes. Horizontal. Yes. <laughs> No, nobody has. That's one thing. That's, I mean, we've never had a retiree who's on health care uh, become deceased. So everybody, we keep just adding to the pool. We haven't got to the point where, the, where it levels off yet. Yeah. So. Anyways, just wanted to share that information. Thought it was timely. I appreciate that. Um, okay. Any other comments on that yeah. before we move on? Okay. Let's go to the good stuff. All right. So this, but this, what you have before you are just the just just a draft line item budget by fund. There's no not a lot of other information here to share with you, um, and this is presented in the same order that the funds are labeled in. So there's not in any sort of priority order. So fund one is a water fund. Um, we can go through this in as much detail as you'd like. Some of these are really straightforward. For example, the water fund, uh, you know, so I'll, I'll try to highlight the big ticket items unless in, in the, you could you flag us if you have questions. Like user fees are, are the rates paid. User fees uh, this year, we've actually had two years in a row where we've collected less fees than we anticipated. They were both very wet years. Last year, 
Um, you know, we had that very wet year, so our actual income was lower than budget this year. We, even though we lowered the, the budget, we still think we're going to come in just slightly lower, not, not materially lower, slightly lower than the budget. We've increased it for next year a little bit. Um, that doesn't account for growth. It's just the water demands are low when you have these wet years. People don't turn the irrigation on as early like this year, right? I mean, we had rain through Saturday, <laughs> just last week. Um, so, um, and, and, and the revenue becomes more volatile because of the, again, that, that, that variable component of water usage. Um, uh, let's see. Sell site revenue is gone. gone. Yes. So that, that, that affects the, you'll see, you'll see that that affects the water fund. Um, the, all these transfers in are really for one-time projects that I, we could talk about in the, uh, when we get to the expense side, because if, if there are changes to the expense, expense assumptions, they'll affect the, um, so our interest income is going up quite a bit yep. from what we've done see for the, this year. You'll see that across the board in all the funds. Okay. The water fund happens to have a, our most substantial um, fund balance, you know. And miscellaneous income for water? That's like will serve letters. Um, I think that's the major, a plan review. Letters and development, like Devel okay. supporting development. Okay, and then the cell site revenue, we're losing that. It went to went to fire. Pardon me. Yeah, from that hub committee, we removed it and sent it. To oh, fire. okay. Well, that one I had to sit out. <laughs> that meeting on the cell site. Oh, that's fair. Oh. Yeah, because it's up the water towers near my house. Okay. Yeah. Um. Oh, no, because we moved it out of the water fund to the nether fund. Yeah, to that's the fire why. Fund. Yeah. Yep. Uh, so that 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 actually happened as part of the mid-year budget yeah, adjustment. Yeah. And this just sort of continues into you know going forward. Okay. And then when you get to wages here, um, so there is uh um I'll talk about when it's a parks and recreation because there, there's there, it, we're asking you to consider something under under parks and recreation. That if it's not considered would affect these a little a little bit, okay. but basically this year when you get to salaries, you'll see that it's quite a bit below the budget. That's really almost a hundred percent due to have a, this that vacancy for the district engineer position uh, for half the year or, or mm -hmm. more. So that's the savings. Um, so you'll see a rebound for next year. Um, let's see. Uh, everything else is. Let's see if there's something I want to call out. Um, Legal, legal services? Yeah, legal services is really difficult to predict because it really depends. This is almost, there would be some costs, but almost all of the volatility of the costs is deals with the Steinbeck case, which is slow, slowly churning through. And there's not a lot of, there's not a lot known about when the next heavy lifting will be. So I actually have less money in there than we've had in the past because it seems to have slowed down. So let me ask you this because we've talked about possibly, um, maybe needing to secure more legal services is that accounted for here that's not, that would be an admin it would legal services are spread throughout the, right. the, the district's funds so thank you for bringing me back um, <laughs> and professional services that's just because we've got our engineer on duty or on uh hired now um some of that is yes that 60 okay. that the sixty thousand dollars was an inflated figure um, okay. yeah yeah so I was going to oh so for the legal services so I know so we have budgeted fifty and pro, okay projected thirty five thousand so that's how much we did twenty three twenty four thirty five thousand yeah well that's what that we think we'll end the year at we okay. spent less than that when we put this together okay so that's what so we've gone down okay so you think fifty okay. Yeah, and that's just a kind of a place. I mean, yeah. it could be if we end up with doing some uh, some significant work, then it could go up okay. uh, through the Steinbeck case. So the significantly is that to account for? I think um, I, I listened to the recording of the facilities meeting um, and the desire to have lockers and a locker room, if it you will. Not, so that's not that's not an item that's budgeted. Okay, so it's not budgeted. Yeah. Um, okay. You have any notes on that? Was there any anything? Oh, I had 
No, no, that, that, oh, that, on the seventy thousand or the seventy thousand. Yes, yeah. I can't remember the, what the. Meter repairs and stuff. I've got it circled. I thought you had all this memorized. Oh my gosh! I don't remember. I don't remember it I'm all like, I think it. I think it's. Um, I think it's. Um, uh, meters. We end up, you know, um, oh. um, you know, we do a lot of meter meters, meter repairs. We have to buy a lot of every every month. Dozens of meters need new new parts, new sensors, new reader, you know, new um, radio parts. Um, so I don't remember any, I, 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 I'm not, that's, I don't remember off. Oh, you're on a blank. Specific. Uh, electricity's yeah. up. Well, that's just, just to make a note because that's one that's a significant increase. So I'm sure somebody will bring that up or question it. Yeah, we'll, we'll, uh, we can just supplies, so we can so just, we can, um, yeah, address. Yeah. I'll make sure to address that. And then the electricity's on when it's up. That's really that's really a fact. The fact they're both we expect to pump more water because we're coming out of a wet. Don't we? We don't always plan for these wet years or expect them. And then also rates. Uh, so I know you've been talking to solar companies. Uh, that's there's no success there right now. Not yet. You know, and I think solar's. You know, I I wouldn't. I don't think you should bank on that being a via being a being something that's going to be helpful. One. We, we don't have very many sites that can accommodate it. Okay. Most of our well sites are on just small little postage yeah. stamp easements. Mm -hmm. So the Creekside site could. Um, uh, but they're just, you know, solar is, might be dying in California. Just the whole net metering has really changed. Um, so it's, oh, it's, I think it's utility, it could be utility raising and yeah, okay, you're right. We did add some of that money in for uh, raising of manhole, raising of like uh, valve boxes oh. and, and stuff like that that we we just have to do regularly. Every time the county does an overlay, we've got to raise those. Um, yeah, that, yeah. Those we, items. And we have some it, valves too. We moved it out of um, one, time one time expenses into um, ongoing. Yeah, valves, valve okay. replacement too. Same thing, just, there's a, they just break and they need to be replaced or they get seized. Thank you. Uh, um, yeah, good point. I knew I had it. I just couldn't. Find it. I think if there's anything else that's that's unusual, um, the one-time expenses are where, where we spent some time. We do have um, money fund money in here to, to continue to fund the water conservation rebate program. That's the cash for grass, mm -hmm. uh, water softener rebates. Those those programs. We 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 haven't actually this year. I haven't done any sort of push for them because we didn't really have any staffing to administer it. And Carrie's been doing. Couple. Here you do. Here is a couple. Doing one right now. And, uh, um, <laughs> so we well, we think we're going to spend seven hundred bucks this year. Uh, we've refunded the mass the water master plan. Once we get the district engineer on board, Justin and I and and, and Lori are going to have to sit down and figure out: Do we want to do both the water and wastewater master plan together or separately, and in what order? But we've got funding in here for the water master the water master plan. Uh, we completed the urban water mass uh, management plan last year. Last December, you accepted it. Mm -hmm. um, let's see here. We bought a new locator for utility lines. That's that 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 that's the during the current year. Um, we had some emergency repairs, both on Main Street and Ramada, that were pretty substantial this year. 
that when I say they were substantial, not only with, not only repairing the pipe is substantial, but the, the repairs to the roadways are expensive. We're, we're not that equipped to do paving jobs, in, especially in busy areas. So we had to hire contractors for that. We did buy these IWAS stations, so they're not funded next year. And then, okay, raising of utilities, we're planning on funding that as an ongoing expense out of repair and maintenance. Uh, that's why there's not money this, this next year there. The tractor, we, we did purchase the mainline valve replacement that we did move forward. Um, there's a, we have a small list of, of, of seized valves that, that need to uh, be replaced. Um, we're asking, and this is a split purchase, this tilt trailer, it's a, it's a heavy duty, it's a trailer to haul heavy duty equipment on, like a tractor or even aerators or pumps. And it's just a, a, a piece of equipment that needs to replace it. Um, equipment shelters, this, this would be shared also with um, wastewater. These would be something like a carport, larger than a radius of the car for storage of pipes and other materials that get damaged by the sun. That Justin's requested. Um, there's the replacement of two service trucks in here. You see one and two. This is uh, the the first one. Um, um, the first one's a, 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 the next uh, service truck. I think it's a 2008 GMC, if I recall. Um, that's that's due. Right now, it's a long lead time on these on these service trucks, to, especially if we try to go to the state bid list because those are like the they only build so many. They're cheaper, uh, but we're waiting like a year after placing the order. So we have an 08 GMC that's kind of next up that's due for replacement. And then last year we got uh, authorization to replace two service trucks. We placed purchase orders for both. One of them we received earlier this year. The second one hasn't been received. And that's why that's a carry forward that 53,000 bucks. That's the water portion of the second truck. That truck has a, um, a hoist on it, to, to like a little crane. And so it costs more. It's a, it's a heavier duty truck with this hoist to pick up um, things like a, a, a pump out of a, a lift station. Um, the NASI recharge recovery project, we've just carried forward the cost for the planning. Mm -hmm. um, for, uh, Platts River replacement, we think we, we got, we got, um, I'm sorry. Um, what would we need to carry that forward if we're going to go through FEMA and figure, you know, they may even contribute a lot of that money out of us under the information. Okay, that's still possible, uh, um, yes. But we don't know if that's going to, actually, we, we have a meeting, I have a meeting tomorrow with the county, okay. get an update from FEMA. So about that could FEMA. go away. That, I, it won't go away entirely because FEMA won't cover 100%. I see. And if they fund it, they're only going to fund the, the, the relocation of the turnout pipeline, not the additional wells that we need, chlorination tank, other uh, other infrastructure. So, but this cost would go down if that were the case. Okay. Yeah. I mean, it could be substantial. It would be very substantial or very helpful if they if they. So you will know that before we possibly talk about finalize this budget. No, I don't think so. I might know if it's a no. Okay. But if it's a yes, it'll be a yes, and I'll the checks here. Because, okay. you know, there's a lot of strings attached with people. The worst case is, is yeah. hopefully we'll have some extra money in. Uh, the Platts River well, that's a, that's the um, the well that is located um, kind of behind Delta RV. Um, we have two wells that down there. We have a river well, a shallow well, that is a, that failed about a year ago, a little more than a year ago, that we put money in to replace. We're starting that project now. We're, we're working with MKM to do the phase one engineering and um, GSI to do the hydrology, uh, but it won't be finished this fiscal year. It's an asset that we definitely need to replace for, for a number of reasons. Um, and we, uh, so that covers the one-time costs. The fund, we're, we're proposing to maintain 100% asset replacement contributions. Um, and if you look at this, uh, if you, the fund total brings in our revenues exceed expenses by nearly seven hundred thousand dollars. And once you factor in the one time, remove the one time expenses from the calculation, we get we have about eight hundred thousand dollars in in revenue uh, more than we do in ongoing revenue over expenses. So the funds is built continuing to build a balance, uh, which is which is great. Oh, okay. So, but I guess I'm. 
Hughes because down here it says fund total. So projected was uh, 916,000, but now it's the 690. So the, 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 the 916 is our projection for the current year. Okay. And the next year, the projection is six almost 700,000. So why, why is it going down? Well, it's, it's just all these totals. If you to total up the revenues from the... Well, I think because you've got a number of expenses under the urban... So because well, it's... Our ongoing expenses are expected to be about $250,000 higher. The operational costs higher. And most of it's that housing charge at 425000 because okay. we're not going to do it. Okay. But so, we have revenue coming in for that. So, but nonetheless, when you say it goes down, it's still 700. That negative number is revenue exceeding expenses. Yeah. But if you total up the, we looked at the operational expenses. If you if you look at this this total operating expense line, it's the top of the second page. The current year's estimate is two point two four two. Next year's forecast is two point five. So that's two hundred and forty thousand dollars, two hundred and fifty, almost about two hundred sixty thousand dollars more next year than than the current year. You know, so you got but, but, but you know we could jump to some of these right off the bat like. 40,000 of that's just power costs. Mm -hmm. um, the Nasi Minnow project is up $70,000. And I guess the revenues have gone down a little bit too, not too much. Okay. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah. yeah, because we lost the 80,000 for. Um, 80, yeah. that's, that's a big chunk of it there. Yeah. 80,000 is, is, so, is the sell side revenue. Okay. But the fund is still bringing in you know, a healthy yeah. amount more than we're spending on. Right. Um, okay, so. I don't, uh, so you want to make sure we address a few things when this goes to the board. I'll make sure they're addressed in the, in the, in the commentary or the text of the budget document, but I don't, I think catch any requested changes by the committee. No. no. Okay. Wastewater. Um, so wastewater, the wastewater, you go user fees, again, these are rates paid. It's a lot more stable on the way on the wastewater fund than the water fund, because for the residential customers, there's no variability, right? Only on the commercial side based on water usage. So we're really close uh, um, on uh, revenues. Um, we made just very minor assumptions about new connections. I mean, we have a few with like ADUs, but they're very, you know, very, uh, not very many. Um, trying to get this in. So interest income is almost a 50% increase over what we budgeted this year. Interesting. Except because we way better rates. Yeah. Right? Better. Okay. Better rates. Is that what it is? Our investments are all doing much better. I mean, okay. So we're getting like, you know, we're getting like five and a half percent interest on a lot of these investments. And just two years ago, they were zero percent or under one percent. Yeah, it makes it made it made a big difference. Smaller in the wastewater fund because the fund balance is lower, so there's less money earning interest. Um so all of these transfers in are related to, to one-time expenses that we can go over. Um, wages is a very similar issue to water fund. The, the savings is really related to not having the district, not having a district engineer on board. Um, oh, just, just the revenue sale of wastewater? Yes. That's... We sell the... Uh, the water fund pays the wastewater fund for the water that we discharge at Selby. I see. And how that's priced is identical to what we pay for Nazi metal water. That's how we've kind of internally priced it, is it's used the same way. I see. And so we go back, we determine the acre foot price of Nazi metal water that we accept, and we apply that same to the volume of wastewater that we discharge at Selby. Okay. And so that's a way of the water fund paying for that, that water supply. I see. Okay. So you'll see an expense that ties directly to it from the... Um, on the water fund. Okay, so I'm sorry, you were, you were at wages. Okay, yeah. so the wages, same issue as we have in the water fund in terms of the vacancy. That's why it's lower this year than the budget. The other thing, there's there's a little bit of variability in the water and the wastewater fund because that crew, the those the the team that's assigned um, to the utilities team, we make estimates based on prior the prior year about how much time they spend in water and wastewater, but we actually pay them based on where they 
actually work at each day. So they report on their time card, whether it was a, a water or a sewer activity uh, during the course of the day. And so some, some years that might, that might uh, ebb and flow a little bit between water and wastewater. The total costs are the same, but how it gets coded based on, on, on where they work. Um, let's see here. So the next one I see is the professional services. It looks like that's jumping from up to 70,000. Yeah, this is really all related to the professional service costs are all related to the new permit. Um, we we're now in about a year into our application review and what ends up happening is the state ends up with lots of questions um, about the permits. As a matter of fact, we're, like, we're working right now with MKN to, to develop um, right. maps and schematics. That's actually under one time. So oh. the new permit. This just says um, this was for the source control program. The 70,000? Oh, okay, okay. Which, which program? The source control program. We moved that to professional services and it was under one time. So remember we hired the Wallace Group to, to yeah. implement the fats, oils, and grease and okay. industrial permitting. Okay. okay. So I've taken that out of the one-time expenses because we've been doing we've been it's an ongoing it's we've been doing it on an ongoing basis. Okay. Okay. I apologize for jumping ahead on the professional services and one on the and, and then for legal services, you're at ten thousand. Do we need for that to be a little bit higher if we're going through a lot of permit processing and things like that? Does an attorney review those? They may at some point. Um, it's this is going to be a, like a five to six year process, okay. so and uh, right now it's more technical. Okay, so, we'll so but that. yes, that that may be an issue. Okay, uh, at some point. Uh, so electricity, same. So no, not more pumping, but just higher rates. So chemicals have actually, and gases have gone down. It's do you really expect that to go down? Well, they, they went up and then uh, uh, down. The chem most of these gas and chemical costs are related to Ivoqua. Mm -hmm. And we're still trying to kind of get that dialed in. in okay. terms of what our usage is going to be, because it varies. It, uh, it, I wish it were nice and easy, but the amount of chemical that we need during hot weather is a lot more than we need in cold weather. Yeah. So I think uh, Justin's still trying to get that kind of dialed into using the minimum, the least amount we need to be effective. Okay. Um, there were years in the past when we were buying acid and other things like that to help the water percolate itself, but we say we're, we're no longer using it. I just look at it, it's nothing goes down in price. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's really <laughs> yeah, volume, and you're right about that. Um, this debt service, this 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 latest debt service on the, on page two, this is going to continue for like eighteen more years. That, that was the the state uh, loan on the uh, US EMP. Uh We've paid off, or we will pay off this interfund loan. Yeah. Same project. Remember, we uh, paid that paid that off to the water fund. And the debt service on CWS, that's just like at two percent or something. Pretty low. It might be lower. It might I think like it's one and a half. half. 1.56 or so, so something, we're not, yeah, we're not going to, it's not a candidate for refund. Yes, because the money we make in the interest. <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're getting arbitrage in that. Uh, okay, so um, so here's the source. When you go to the one-time cost, the, the, uh, so we've removed source control from one-time expenses because we assume it's going to continue going forward. And, um, there's the new permit compliance support, this 45000 okay. bucks. I'm sorry for making those two up. Uh, that's consulting help for that. Engineering consultant. So the source control program. So it was a one-time expense of the seventy thousand, and so that's that's done, right? The source control program. We moved this roughly fifty thousand dollars. That was in year. If you look back, do you see these? Yeah. We have been doing it for several years. We just moved those expenses and put them in the ongoing category okay. because we've been doing them. So, okay. So, does this? At some point, okay. I know initially when we started it, we didn't want to do any um, fines or anything like that. So I mean, at some point, all this money that we're spending is that going to like bring some money back in? In terms of like, I mean, I mean, my my question is, why are we spending this much money? I mean, shouldn't the source control program? We've gone through all. You know, we've talked to everyone. Everyone should be aware of what's going on. 
You know what I mean? Um, they don't all behave themselves. But so we're spending that kind of money because they're not behaving themselves. And we're now issuing um, administrative penalties to... Which is going to... Does it justify this? No. Oh, no. We'll never be able to get that money back. It's a lot of money. It's, it's, it is a lot of money. Essentially, the goal, though, is to protect the, the district's wastewater... Yeah, the wastewater. Yeah. ...quality. So what ends up happening is if we let... If, we, if we're not um, keeping uh, tight controls on the dischargers, then... There's risk that they'll discharge, you know, untreated wastewater or this wine winery yes. discharge, and it'll cause cause us to pay fines on the other end. Yes. The wastewater and, control board. Yeah. You know, it's, it's interesting because the wineries that are out in a way are, don't have a sewer system to dump the yes. waste in. My concern is over in Tent City, they're adding wineries over there. Yeah, they keep so, so they keep adding breweries and wineries. And if it's costing us this much yeah. money, then I think we need to look at those fees being jacked up. I mean, yeah, because be the a... county's going to keep continuing to approve it, and it's it's using our sewer system. And on right. the back end, though, it will affect the quality of our wastewater. Yeah, I mean, these are ratepayers that are paying money into it, so obviously this affects their rate. It does. So yeah. we yeah. need to kind of justify the use of this money. I mean, so there's a couple of options. When the districts begin enforcing this, we didn't charge restaurants or uh, these industrial dischargers annual permit costs to maintain their zero discharge permit. The, the idea is this is really just ensuring they're doing what they say they're going to do. Yeah. Um, and and then some, in some cases, we've got some some businesses that are unable to comply with those permit requirements and require a lot of um, a lot of time and energy. And we have just a couple key ones, a couple that are like that. Yeah, but they're not going to haul it off like they're supposed to. That's well, the we problem. Have, the ones that are the most time consuming are ones that have pre permitted pretreatment systems. And so they have to then provide water analysis every month about the quality of their effluent. Discharge. Yeah. yeah. And then in some cases, they're not meeting their discharge um, requirements. It, 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 like, so, so do we, I mean, I guess my next question is, do we, I know we have an independent contractor that's doing this. So do we still need to have this independent contractor or now? Because I know when we first started, it was, you know, it was pretty messy. So yeah. it needed to be cleaned up and then, you know, pinpoint problems, how to set up a system. So are we to a point where we could, you know, have the city engineer take over this task? So we have to hire somebody. Okay. So, here's, so here's the arrangement we did back four years ago or so. We used to fund a full-time permit and compliance specialist position. Mm -hmm. And that position became vacant, and we brought on this this con this vent, the, you know uh, Wallace group to assist us, and we defunded half of that position to pay to pay for this cost. Mm -hmm. We could um, go back to again funding that. It, I don't think you'll find a savings. It's just no. a matter of whether it's a district employee doing the work or a contractor doing the work. I'm not, there may be a savings, but I'm not sure it's going to be very significant one way or the other because the work still has to be done. Uh, um, I think I, but I, you know, I think it's premature for me to answer the question because we've just gone gone through a period with not even having a district engineer, yeah. and that person who was even in the part time role hasn't been here in six months. Yeah. yeah. So, um, it I don't want us to get to a position again where we where we're so far behind that it's a um, it's a free for all out yeah. there because yeah. then we're, we have to be bad guys again. Right yeah. now we got this down to just a handful of. Um, Businesses that are that are not fully compliant. Yeah. So, so I think you raise an excellent point because you're right. It, it, it I mean, if we're paying out this kind of expense, for handful it's of yeah. For so well, if everybody gets to buy, yeah, then that does so. go back to the ratepayers. Um, and and if you know, so yeah. So I I think what we'd like to maybe do in this case is one the the current level the current discharge permit limits are going to have to all change. When we end up with a new permit uh, requirement, our efforts for pretreatment are going to expand exponentially because we're not going to be able to treat this wastewater to that standard mm -hmm. if it comes. Yeah. So more likely, we're going to be spending way more time and effort in this area mm. than less. But uh, once we get our new district engineer on board, she starts on Monday. Mm -hmm. you know, and, <laughs> and, and this permit process, I think we're going to be able to see, you know, really 
uh, would we be better off keep bringing this back in house? Would it allow us to have more control? I'm finding that I, I have to spend a lot of time on this right right now because we're dealing with the com the consultant doesn't necessarily you know go butts heads with the business. Yeah. And um, well, I think we've initially tried to take the good neighbor approach. Well, that didn't work. And that didn't. Yeah, and I wouldn't expect it to work because it's going to take them time and money and effort to do it right. But you know, I, I look at it and say. The county is going to continue to allow for these breweries and wineries to exist in town, if you will, and using our public sewer system. I mean, just, I mean, I wish there was a way you could have a way to eliminate the service to them, you know, just shut up about them and say, <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, exactly. no, there, make sense. there is a way you can do so. Okay. You can turn off services to a business that violates it, but it's a, you know, they, they're owed a process, like a, a due so process. So does our process allow for that? Yes. Being, okay. Yes. So the but right now, we've just begun implementing, yeah. just in the past six months or a year, we've started uh, doing administrative fines to a small number of restaurants that never bothered to install the grease traps. I think, to my knowledge, we only have one that's blowing that, who hasn't complied. And then we've just, I've only in the last couple of months been admit, been issuing administrative orders to a pre to a permit holder. So I know uh, at TAG, Murray Powell has asked about this uh, and if there's any offenders over there. And I told him when we have a process and we're working to make sure that um, there is compliance, but I couldn't speak to, you know, who's not compliant and, and who is. Yeah, you know, there's, each... I think there's a public interest is what my point being. Um, and certainly TAG is looking at, you know, they get the, um, from the planning department, they're getting these projects to review. And so there is an interest to know uh, if it is an issue. Well, we require every, uh, when we get those, when they come to us for like a will serve letter, we require them to enroll in the, in the discharge process, but we don't have a fee set up. And that might, again, I think that's really where we're headed. How do we make this sustainable and who should be paying those costs from one point of view? It's an investment to ensure that district isn't hit with fines and penalties and, and, and stuff coming down the sewer system that, that costs us in. Because if we didn't do this, uh, maybe we end up with burnt up pumps and pipes that have really high or low pH where the where you have corrosion. Mm -hmm. Or you have a, ba a batch of, of wastewater that's so bad that it, it kills the bugs of the plant and are discharging terrible water quality, which plugs up Selby. And there's all these other host of problems when that occurs. So... This is, from one point of view, it's an investment to make sure that yeah. hasn't happened. From the other point of view, you'd say, hey, look, why should uh, why should a Jane Doe who lives over here on 5th Street be subsidizing a, a brewery uh, by having the district uh, uh, sewer fund pay for all this, all this consulting work yeah. or the, 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 all, the, all the enforcement activities? Mm -hmm. So it's probably some combination of both. I would think that we'll, we'll yeah, settle, exactly. settle that. Um, but right now, there's not a cost beyond these. There's not a cost to enroll. It's yeah. a zero cost yeah. uh, program. Yeah. Um, so I think there's room for improvement, yeah. for sure. Just the interest inside will evolve. Mm -hmm. uh, wastewater master plan. Uh, we've done some of the components uh, of that, but the main master plan itself hasn't begun. And again, I think we'll have to decide internally and make a recommendation to the board whether or not the water wastewater master plan get done simultaneously or, or as one. Or in my view, it's likely that the wastewater side will have to be tackled earlier just because we have a lot of wastewater challenges that we're facing. Um, this, this is, um, I'm just looking for the projects. The, the ones that are, don't have any dollars for next year are complete. Um, the service truck, this is the wastewater side of the first service work we talked about. Mm -hmm. And number two is the carryover from last year, the wastewater side. Those are split. Here's the, here's the uh, tilt trailer cost. Um, this is split between water and wastewater. The water side was smaller. The wastewater side is, is more because the trailers used uh, more for wastewater functions. I think it was 5,000 in water, water foot. Um, equipment shelters, same. Those are, that's the carport structures. Um, Aerator, we replaced one, <laughs> and um, really the the this replacement program was our what we've historically done is we had X amount of aerators in the ponds 
operating. And when one failed, we would call a crane, pull it out, send it in for repairs, or replace it. And then several months later, whenever that was done, it was put back in the ponds. But in the meantime, we had reduced treatment capacity because the aer the aerator is actually gone. Last year, we bought one new aerator to essentially have on the shelf. So the next time there's a one that needs to be replaced, crane can come out, take it out of the pond, put the new one in, no downtime. Uh, we have, we maintain two different styles of aerators. This would be to have the second style of aerator available so that we reduce our downtime in the future. So it's 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 to, it's essentially a new. Why do we have two different styles? The, the, different functions. The, uh, they go, they're, they're, they serve in different. This, uh, this brush aerators, they're two different sizes. You know, the ponds are shaped differently. You can't accommodate a, a, okay. this bigger one. And so there was only one. Piece of right. Yeah. Okay. Um, this okay. next project's pretty big, this bar screen. Yes. This is essentially a rebuild, uh, to rebuild the, the bar screen, all the internals to it. The bar screen at the wastewater plant is the, it's part of the headworks. Um, right at the beginning, right? Yes. Yeah. So, so, when, so 10 years ago, yes. This was a manual process. Uh, you might remember mm -hmm. that there was an open grate and our crew every day would take a pitchfork and scrape out the stuff that got caught in the screen. Yeah. It was a very large screen, a lot of small stuff made it through. Manual screen. And if it, if it didn't get scraped out, it would back up and it could cause a spill, especially on a slant like this. Then we got this mechanical bar screen, we got it donated from the city of Paso Robles. When we got it donated, we replaced a few components, broken teeth in the in the big mobile screen. Mm -hmm. But now it's been in use for us for like nine years. Yeah. And so this this would rebuild the motor and uh, replace all the all the the moving parts on the screen itself. It doesn't replace the entire unit, just the internals. And they just they don't want to go back to mining. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's a, it's your job today. <laughs> I could bring that up. So, so there's Just nothing. So there's it. nothing in either uh, fund for what um, I think uh, Jason was asking for in terms of the lockers. Uh, is that something to the finance or the uh, facilities committee? So what we committed from the facilities committee was that we would incorporate that project into the wastewater master plan. Okay. So we can get a budget estimate okay. and determine okay. if the building itself would be could accommodate it. That makes so, sense. How long would that take? I mean, to me, I mean, I watched the same thing, and yeah, it kind of. I mean, not only the lockers, but the well, suit space where they're they eating they lunch and contaminants yeah. on their clothing, yeah. and, which you know, is pesticides, yeah. chemicals, and so these contaminants are on their clothing. Yes. They yeah. go into the office, yes, and, and they eat their lunch. Yeah, no, I, I, I was thinking I walked in, and they were all eating, and they were at the clothes where it's like yeah. Yeah. Kalosha would have been. Spinning. Yeah, it's not the it's not an ideal environment. So, so I mean, how long would it be by the time we come? Well, I mean, it doesn't, it'll, you don't have to finish the master plan, but that was our initial reaction. Was let's because in this master plan, we're going to end up with a list of dozens of projects with costs. Yeah, and priorities. but that seems like a pretty high number one priority. Um, to me, because I'm thinking that's a liability uh, from a worker yeah. safety and then standpoint. It like it could be done, maybe not, not too difficult in terms of design, because the Justin said there's a space near his office where we have this. Well, the, the, yeah, the, the building has it's, it's more than that though, because it, it, you know the, the the while it's one big building on the left when you're facing it on the left hand side, those are big open shop doors for parking and servicing equipment. On the, the right half, you have the office space, which you've been in, where Justin is and where that break room and yeah. table is the yeah. that you're referring to. And then in between the two is a fully enclosed section of the building, but it's not indoors. I mean, it's not it's not con uh, conditioned space. And so I think we're talking about that would be the location that probably this remodel could take place. And you'd move some of that storage out of that area, expand that break room, build the locker room, additional restrooms. I, I don't think it's a small project. Well, to do it right, it wouldn't be a small project, but it, it seems like a much needed project. And my concern, if it's in the master plan, it makes sense to be in the master plan, but the master plan is going to take time to develop, and then it's going to be funding, and it just seems like it needs immediate attention. I wouldn't even know where to start in terms of a budget. Is it a couple hundred thousand? Yeah, uh, I, I mean, it just I seems like something. Bring it up to the board, maybe. 
Well, how's the board? We're going to need to be directed to go back and start, you know, putting architectural. I mean, we're going to need to put resources into it in order to come up with what we want or what we recommend to come up with a budget figure to to, to even start. I, I, unless there's more to it that I'm not a, that I don't know from Justin's point of view. I mean, it, this this only came up from Justin. I only heard it about it a month ago or something for the first time. N not that it's not a valid, it, you know, if I've been out there, every time I'm out there, you're right. It's like not an ideal arrangement. Yeah. Um, so should have, should have, should have, would have, could have. You know, thought about this previously, um, but it's. But I think what you're saying is too late for it to be incorporated yeah, here or to I could getting put a swag and we could throw some money okay. into it. But I don't know that it's happened. I don't know that's going to happen. Even if you put money into it, we still can't. You know, it's going to need. Can we put money in the budget to at least do the initial planning? Yes, if you don't want it to be incorporated, if you don't want to want it to be done as a part of the master plan. I mean, if you want it to be separate. I, I'm just trying to get a jump start on it because it just seems pretty important. Um, so, I mean, if you had it at least a. I, I'm not a, sure. I, I'm not sure how we even fund it. Um, so, here's one of the other things that's a little. I need to step back and kind of analyze this. We fund a lot of things at the wastewater plant out of both water and wastewater because it's, it's essentially our corporation yard. Yep. It just is at the wastewater treatment plant. And this need isn't tied to just wastewater. It's yeah. not a, it's, 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 a, it's a yeah, it's an employee welfare kind of thing yeah. at the corporation yard. So it'd be something that is funded between probably between water and wastewater. Um, it would be an expansion. I think it'd be eligible to be used out of uh, impact fee funds. It's an expansion of our our it's to accommodate more people, more workers because of a growing community and growing demand. So um I think we'd have to put some some time and energy into does that mean developing the budget? I mean, is it, is it even possible to have another separate structure? I mean, is the remodeling cheaper or having another? I don't know. The, like a manufacturer just having bring it in. Yeah, I don't bring it. Yeah. Like so, what's the time well, frame for the yeah, master exactly. plan? Yeah, that's what. We're well, talking. our district engineer starts on Monday. So yeah, that'll help a lot too. But we, it, I don't expect her to do it. We don't have the manpower to even develop the the RFP. Yeah. And manage the contracts. Yeah, yeah. You know, so I tried to get, to be honest with you, MKN to do some of this work. But see, an engineer cannot assist with drafting an R an RFP and still bid on the project. Yeah, there has to be a separation. Yep. Uh, um, so MKN was willing to do work for us, but they didn't want to touch anything to do with yeah. the master plans because they want to bid on the master plans. Yeah, understood. They didn't want to taint their um, or same thing with project administration. Yeah. They didn't want to do, they didn't want to be involved in project administration because they can't administer their own project. So is that one uh, one of the priorities that you're making for the engineer? Yes, absolutely. Okay. All right. Yeah, then, it's a high priority. Well, I guess. Yeah. Let me just make a note and, and at a minimum, I can put in here the short and the near term we expect to come maybe as soon as this year with our budget amendment. Uh, it, you know, it sort of depends if, if for some reason the master plan is not going to be done, not going to be done in a timely manner. I think what I'm hearing is you don't want this to just be kicked yeah. down the curb. I, well, it, well, I'd like to at least to have something started to at least get some design work done um, because it's still going to take time to get the design and to hire contractors. Um, but at least if we can get a jump on the design of what do we what's our need there? So, so are we going to do it as a budget amendment then, or put something in this? Well, I guess it wouldn't be a budget amendment if we move forward with that. But I guess if your engineer is starting on Monday, let's have her figure it out. You, you. Well, there's only so much she's going to accomplish on Monday. Oh, you have keys here. But I was going to give her Friday. I was going to give her till Friday. Oh, <laughs> yeah, I, I think I'd like to. I really feel unfair trying to figure this out without yeah, yeah, Justin's yeah. involvement. Yeah, I get it. Yeah, exactly. He may he may say yes as a need, but this is not where I where we need to put yeah. our effort first. Yeah. I mean, so you know, he may he may yeah, feel yeah. adamantly that no, well, there's other things that we want to that yeah. we need to move forward with. You know, we really that came up because we started talking about what are the facility needs. Yeah, so that's I, that's why I kind of hesitate yeah. to. I don't want but, to. But when I think about them, with, you know, the contaminants, the chemicals, and just dealing with wastewater, and then your clothing, and you're going in and then having lunch, it's just not the right environment. Yeah. Um, so so I think we could. Yeah, there. I think we should let. So, Jeff 
just then facilities can be figured that out and then and we can admit then, the budget. Yeah. 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 So I, as far as finance is concerned, we're aware of it and we could look at amending the budget, but let people that are supposed to take care of it take care of it. Yep. Yeah, I, I think it's a it's a it's a very valid point and, and yeah, I just need to figure out, okay, is it do we have a good solution? What would that cost? Who would pay for it? And then we can come forward with um, you know with a, with, a, with, a, with a rubber with a plan that makes yeah. sense. Yeah. Yeah. So, okay. Uh, this CCTV, this is soft. This is really we have this, we have equipment that um that's a we have this, it's a robotic um device that you can put into a sewer line that has a camera, camera? system. And, and actually we have all and so we have this, we own this, and over the years we've cameraed a lot of the main lines in town and, and can go to do so pretty much any time. However, the software that manages all those recordings is out of date, no longer available. And so Justin has selected a different software that would that could go that could serve us going forward, but can also take all of the existing recordings and make them visible, okay, organize those for our, our use again. It's just an outdated platform. Okay. So it's not new equipment, it's really a soft like a software, a data management system. Yeah. For those for that that purpose, um, there's, there's some real there is some value here in, in in serving the customer too because if we have access to those videos and a customer says hey look I've got a I'm gonna I have a uh, I don't know where my my sewer line is and I'm thinking about replacing my lateral can you show me where's the street if we have access to the videos we can pull it up the, what that camera does in addition to those videos it it marks the the measurement from the manual. Oh. So we can say, no, you're 117.5 feet from the manhole. That's where your clean out is. And then, then, they, then they know. That's nice. Um, West side? Yeah, so so we this this is this is almost exactly the same issue you, you brought up on the um the locker room, although this is something that, that Justin put forward, so it's in here. Um we know that the West Side lift station is the main um bottleneck in our in our wastewater collection system it's the area we we are most concerned about in those really high flow days like storm days mm -hmm. that that lift station has pumped the lift station capacity and the pumps were designed for two pipelines to be to go from the lift station to where it discharges a new gravity system up by vineyard drive but only one exists today and so uh, while I fully expect the master plan to kind of uh, develop a cost estimate and a priority for it, Justin wanted to get started with the design. We, we're pretty convinced that this is going to be the high priority wastewater project as, as far as capacity goes. This would be 100% development factory funded. However, we don't even have this much. We don't, we're barely going to be able to afford it with it, but we, we don't have a lot of development factory uh, assets in the wastewater fund. We don't. Oh, we're so. cutting it now because people are buying water units. There, some of them are getting sewer units too. So, we're, so how much do we have in the impact? Well, we haven't developed a summary of a balance for you yet, but our estimate from a year ago. Is. 500,000 bucks. Mm. So maybe the water fund would have to borrow. Uh, yeah, we'll have some money. Yeah. Well, well, let's just you know see how the, where the shakes out. But this was the we couldn't afford the design. This was just but that's what was money. So, I mean, uh, does it make sense to do the design? I guess you could do the design. I mean, if you can't afford the project, it doesn't make sense to do it. Well, we're going to need financing if we can't. We're, we can't continue to. It is. It sounds like it's, 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 it's more than it's going to have yeah. to be yeah. dealt with. Okay, yeah. so you need so okay. Yeah, because see now we've got the hotel getting ready to come yeah, online. I mean, right. we we did some studies. We know we can accommodate that that additional flow, but it just gets us that much closer to capacity. Okay. All right. Um. So that's that. We've got uh, funded replacement, uh, fully funded. Um. And you see here, the operating fund's super healthy, right? We're bringing in about a million, or the total fund is bringing in about a million dollars more than we're spending. Um, so the the operations, the operating side is very healthy in the water fund. I'm but sorry, it, wastewater. But it fund. looks like we've got some additional expenses, though. <laughs> so can this 
fund the money that's in the fund being used for the yeah. yeah. And so is it like a matter of loaning the money to the uh, to the ad, you know, the so that impact can fee that, fund? Yeah, that can be done. Um, I mean, you could go in the hole in the impact fee fund, but uh, so you have flexibility. You can use operational funds for capital improvements, expansion, but not the other way. Yeah, yeah. But so, I want to get that money back, though. You want to get that money back. The other thing is, the other thing is, it's really great to have the operations fund begin to build a bit. This was the this was the fund that was in the worst shape for many years. When I you know, so eleven years ago, this fund was in the hole. Yeah. And it took us a long time to crawl out of yeah. it. And um, keep in mind that all of the work in uh, that we anticipate needing to take place to to comply with the new permit, new treatment. Technology and stuff will all be have to be paid out of the operations fund because they're not development related. They're not growth related. Yeah. They're not designed to expand the plant's capacity. They're designed to improve its quality of treatment. So those will be ratepayer funded, operations. Rate payer funded yeah. uh, supported activities. Drainage fund. Not much here. Yeah, not much here is right. Um, you know, this, 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 I'm just cautioning you, you know, the fund continues to run at a deficit. It's small. You've known about this, mm -hmm. you know, so, uh, but there's not, I don't think there's much to talk about. No. Uh, drainage. Um, any, any questions or should we move on? So, so the deficit is how much? 4,500. 4,587 4, is the deficit. Okay. Yeah. And, and you have... And part of it is we've got allocation of administrative cost is twenty seven hundred dollars. Um, so if it's in deficit, do we need to address that? You will. You will. You have about twenty five. You have about five more years worth of money. Where does it show it? Oh, because you looked at it. Somewhere yes. Okay. Yeah. All right. Okay. All right. Uh, general fund. So the general funds are admin fund, right? Mm -hmm. This is the. It might be a confusing. This is really tr is treated more like an internal service fund. Um, so because we have no tax dollars funding it directly. Uh, but uh, so you see rental income, that's for this room. It's just very modest. Mm -hmm. uh, interest, it has a small balance. So it doesn't get much interest. Miscellaneous in income, um, those are like rebates from SDRMA for buying like uh, chairs. Chair, you know, if we buy like an ergonomic, ergo ergonomic furniture. And then, of course, the transfer of funds is sort of makes up the gap. That's the that's the other funds contributions. Mm -hmm. right? And then uh, here's this that transfer from that trust is right here. Uh, that hundred eighty nine. That's when, when uh, Natalie mentioned we expect to bring in hundred eighty nine thousand. We expect next year to be two twenty. That's the, the those are those are just the cost the premiums for just our direct costs for yeah. retiree health care uh, to to either the employee for reimbursing their deduction from PERS or to PERS directly. We, we pay both. Um, okay, we have uh, wages. Uh, this is no new people or anything. Uh, a little bit of overtime. I just point out just the real minor uh, items that have, that have changed a lot. There's the retiree health insurance that jumps up in cost. We did factor in a 10% um, increase in cost in 2025. Yeah, that's in here. We have one in... Two, really two new retirees. Two right? more retirees than we had a year ago this time. Okay. We didn't, we're not forecasting any new additional retirees, but that could happen. Uh, and again, keep in mind now that um, you might recall that uh, up until a couple years ago, these retiree costs were funded by the department with the employee retired from, and then we've since merged all of this responsibility to the admin fund. So the admin fund has the entire OPEB balance, has all the obligations. Um, let's see here. things that are, uh, oh, property liability insurance is up quite a bit. Um, that's just a, uh, just a cost from SDRMA. I mean, you can see that looking back from just two years ago, it's up like, 50, yeah, 50% or more from 120,000, 170,000. Um, we do have enough money in here. Oh, so you wanted to talk about legal services. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I, I do think this is where you, where you, if, um, what ends up happening is when I get legal bills, we, we, we use three legal firms. 
I'll cover the easiest one first. We have a, a contract with Liebert Cassidy Whitmore that is, that is a flat fee of about four thousand dollars. Is that right? For HR related. Yeah. So what that provides us is access to the training seminars they give and unlimited consult, unlimited brief consultations. And then if we end end up engaging them in some sort of like a, a work product. Yeah, forty five hundred dollars. Yeah, uh, a work product. Then they bill us by the hour. That's covered one hundred percent by admin because it's just it benefits the whole district. Uh, and any employee, we we make these trainings available to all the various different departments, and and we have sometimes we have more participation than others. That's kind of an easy one. Um, then we have Liebert Cassidy. I'm sorry. Then we have a BKS. That's primarily going to be water and sewer and Steinbeck, but it, but. It, um, they give us a, a an itemized um, bill every month, and I go through every item and code where the work was done. Mm -hmm. uh, was it a water fund? Was it a reimbursement account? We have, you know, we get like a, sometimes it's for like a repairing agency agreement where the property is paying for that service essentially. And then um, Carmel and Nicolasha. Sorry, just going back. BKS is per hour. Then they're both per yes. Okay. BKS and Carmel and Nicolasha are per hour. Mm -hmm. And BKS just gets us a new rate every year. Um, what is their rate? Now? I want to say for this for the principals, it's three hundred twenty dollars an hour. I could be I could be wrong. Well, I can pull that up actually. Huh? <laughs> I thought it was like four fifty. Let me let me. I, I'll take it to you because I got it for, every time I get it. I'm always on hand. <laughs> <laughs> Can you put one of their most recent bills? Yeah. I don't, I don't, I don't want to misquote. I don't want to um, tell you. For Carmel and Akasha, it's $210 an hour. Hmm. Um, and the, it's tied to a CPI. You approved a new agreement with them about a year ago, you yeah. might recall. I think it was last June. When we get invoices from uh, Carmel and Akasha, I, uh, I'll do the same thing. They, 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 they'll give a brief description of every activity. For Carmel and Nakasha, most of their costs are billed to admin because they're reviewing our agendas, which I code to admin. And if they're about a conflict of interest or a general matter, they get coded to admin. If it's about a fire matter, fire impact fee matter, for example, it would get, get coded to the fire. Our costs for them are you know, quite a bit smaller. Most of our cost, most of our legal costs are through BKS because that's where the Steinbeck case is and, and more in-depth uh, work. 3.30 an hour. 3.30. That's to Josh or Ryan or something yeah. like that. There's, actually, we've got several people bill. Like Holly's probably cheaper if you if you scroll over to. Yeah, so this one's three hundred an hour. Yeah, that first time bill. So this ten thousand bucks is what what I would expect to code to admin if we do make any changes to the legal services. So if you want to, uh, there's been some interest in maybe exploring whether or not. We want to have legal representation at board meetings. My expectation would be we'd be, we'd be increasing our costs by roughly 500 bucks a meeting, um, depending on who we hire or if it's BKS or, or Carmen Latasha or somebody else, it's going to be 200 to 350 bucks an hour. Uh, there might be some meetings that they're just not needed at all. We have maybe 20 meetings, 20 board meetings a year. So I think it would, it would be worthwhile to, um, putting something in here for that. Maybe not every meeting, but maybe planning for at least one meeting a month. We may not need it always, but I think there's certain topics that- yeah, Just, uh, yeah. And having the ability to talk with them and hear yeah. know, legal counsel, meeting agents, things like that. It's one of the challenges that I've had. So so this is, this is kind of on me. So when I, the district actually had, um, going back like to 25 years, Steve Cronick from BKS was the district's general counsel and came down as needed from Sacramento. Um, but 
and this predates me, so I, I'm not positive. At some point, he was pushing back and saying, look, I know it's just inconvenient. He was in Sacramento, it's just a long ways away. And so I, and I, and actually, since I've been here, Steve Connick came to several, came to some, some meetings as well, where we asked him to. And then he's, he's since retired, right? He was with DKS, but he, he's the district's long time point person from DKS, you know, from late 80s through 2014 or so. Um, when the board uh, got into a period where there was a lot of uh, bickering and, and concern, so let's say maybe 2011, 2012-ish, the district engaged with Carmel Nakasha to have a local legal presence. And for a period of time, an attorney, and sometimes two from their firm were attending every board meeting. Mm -hmm. And shortly after I got here, I felt like there wasn't a need for them to, to always be present. And we came up with a revised arrangement where they could come as needed, but they want, they would continue to review our agendas for brown eye compliance and be available, just sort of generally aware of what's going on. And that pattern has, has kind of existed since then. Um, at the time, Heather Whittem was our point person, and you'll remember Heather, and she was, uh, and, and, uh, and then she left that firm and we got assigned David Hirsch. And that's been the case for approximately five years now. I want to say uh, some 2018, 19, somewhere in there. Um, so that that's kind of and David. David has only rarely attended your meetings. Uh, I can't remember him being here in person since 2019. Uh, but I know he attended a couple of Zoom meetings in the couple of years we're doing that. He's attended more recently for just certain topics for you, but only on a as needed basis and not on a regular basis. I don't know if Carmel Nakasha would have an attorney interested in coming to board meetings because I think what I've heard is it, one of the things that makes it difficult is when you say it'd be nice to have somebody here maybe once a month or whatever. I think I can do a good job of predicting what kind of legal issues might come up, but I but sometimes things come up totally randomly, not related to anything on the agenda whatsoever. That that where where it might be handy to have that. So it's, it's maybe harder to predict than. Well, it would just I like a placeholder job. amount for us to have the funds to um, have that kind of representation. Um, and you're right. Sometimes it's like, can't plan for it in the future. But I think that there are some topics that um, we know would probably um, be advisable to have legal representation. Yeah, right now... I, if, if I know that there's a, uh, there are either questions from the board or we have an item that's particularly sensitive or, or has legal interpretation, I would schedule the right person to be here. Those don't happen a ton. I think what's ended up occurring is there's been questions that have come up that I didn't predict or comments that have come up that I failed to predict where maybe an attorney here would be helpful. Uh, I think if you wanted to have somebody here, most meetings you need to probably allocate an additional ten grand for next year. I mean, and I don't mean that's just a ball. Five. That's that's kind of a close thing. Five, I don't think you don't think five. five? You think we need the ten? Okay. I, I just think it, I think you know. Yeah, I I think it would be worthwhile. Um, because even last meeting, I thought maybe it would have been nice to have an attorney here. I mean, it's it's hard yeah. to predict that. Yeah. But, you know, it's, so, I mean, if we did get an attorney to, you know, if, um, like, if we wanted to go back and get a consult with an attorney, then who knows how much it would have cost. But if we had the attorney here, we it might nip it in the butt. Yeah, they could have, yeah, the, in terms of, like, okay, okay, can we do the development piece? Can we not do it? You know, um, so we could, we I, could just get our that. answer right yeah. away. So yeah. I'm good with that. $5,000 additional. Maybe we could clarify items quickly. Rather than let it simmer or you know or nip it in the bed. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So I, I'm I'm good with putting in twenty thousand. Okay. I think so it would be worthwhile um, to plan for that. I, it's not to say that it's always going to be needed, but I think yeah, that's up to the board president and you to kind of confer together. Okay. So is the committee recommending increasing that to twenty grand with the goal of having a an attorney in person at most board meetings. Is that is that fair? Half to say? of that is for that. Yeah. 
Okay, just to just just well, to also, go full circle on this. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Could that actually like because if we do have an attorney that's here more regularly, maybe some of that cost that we are having currently kind of you know. So I get billed. Yes. Yeah. So uh, I have this arrangement with Carmel Nakasha where they're billing us thirty minutes to review an agenda. Okay. So, but if an attorney's going to be coming here, they're going to expect they're going to they're actually going to have some prep time too because they're not going to want to come in cold. So they're that whoever that is going to be the person reviewing the agenda, okay. and it might even be more because they're going to want to review things oh, that I maybe see. David Hirsch is reviewing now because he's not going to be asked about those. And there may be questions. There may be questions. So yeah. I think the ten grand is okay. is, is a low estimate. You know, uh, it really is going to depend on ultimately and the reason I said I want to go full circle is because. So we have this arrangement with those three firms. Lieber Cassidy is not a candidate to come be your your at board meeting. I think council. we need somebody local. Uh, BKS, I don't believe they're gonna they're they're too far away. And I, I think what I've kind of uh, observed is you know having somebody with a physical presence would allow board members to to develop yeah. a better rapport with. Mm -hmm. um, so it's it's right now that's Carmel Nakasha, and I'm not certain if they have. Uh, that's not a very big firm. They have a few people that do municipal work, David Hirsch being one of them. He's kind of semi-retired. I don't know what his willingness would be to start attending regularly in-person meetings. It could be that we would need to go out and see who else is available to provide that kind of service. And I don't want to jump too far ahead. No. All I'm saying is even if this gets approved, I'm not sure you can implement it day one. No, yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah. That's yeah, fine. That. That's fine. Okay, okay, I'm just going to do a time check because it's five minutes to four if we've got to be out of here by five. I think we got just a couple more funds that are trickier, and okay. uh, maybe we'll get a minute. Uh, there's just not a heck of a lot more. I already mentioned property liability insurance is one that I wanted to call yeah. for attention. There's just a handful not of a... small. Oh, oh board room chairs. chairs. <laughs> <laughs> is that something you want to keep in here? I put a lot of complaints about this chair. <laughs> Actually, we should we should leave our don't replace Wayne's. <laughs> 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 he told us all that so that Natalie could have it. Like, I moved the, I moved that chair over here. Uh, we did put money in here for a, there. There seems to be interest in potentially holding a strategic planning workshop after the next election. I don't know if you want to keep this money in or not, uh, but that's what we spent in 2020 when we did one. And where is that under? Strategic plan, strategic plan workshop. I, I have not heard any interest. Oh, in strategic plan workshop. Here it is. So, well, I think it depends on what happens with the board makeup. So, I, I don't think it hurts to keep it in here. I don't know. Better strike it. I don't care. Yeah. All right. Okay. And then we have the other one-time cost I is. You want to check it out? Yeah. I mean, I I don't. Well, know, I don't want to. I can make this really easy on you if you take, if you take it out. It out legal eighty eight hundred dollars. I don't have to change any other funds. Oh, that would be good. Yeah, I rather have a. Have a legal. I'm, I'm okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. That's okay. fine. Okay, so then are we deciding then to go back and make the so legal will be eighteen eight hundred. Yeah. Just I, I think that's the reason I can I can uh, is because I think it's going to be a couple months before you're going to be able to have somebody start covering the meetings anyway. Yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly. That's fine. I know. Yeah, exactly. Because <laughs> <laughs> this fund affects every fund, so yeah. that's why. Yeah. All right. Anything else on this? Uh, no. OPEB. Um, OPEB everything's fully funded. Yep. Replacement. Uh, you've got that in there. Um. So you don't have any recruiting cost in here, or is it in here? Recruiting for employees? Yeah. No, they're, they're funded. The, the, the recruiting costs are billed against the department that has the vacancy. So, but if you've got anything in your admin, so you're, you, nobody can leave? Well, I was going to say, do so, we know something? <laughs> so what ends up happening, though, is we, we know we end up with, a, typically when we're recruiting, we have a savings, like a salary savings. Yeah, so, so that's how it is. So, and the recruiting costs are going to be like advertisements and stuff. We charge those to the departments that are that have the vacancy. So, let's say it's a utility operator, we pay the water too. Okay, fire fund. It's always a good one. Okay, uh, let's see. Safer grant. That's that's the ongoing funds for the two engineers. 
Yeah, as we know that that's there. Um, and are we applying for that again? Uh, it would be applied for like a year from now. Okay. Um, so we would see it in the 25, 26 budget if we should get that. I don't know if we would do it in the. And we wouldn't do it in the budget because we wouldn't know yet if we. And I think it. But I mean, it, that's where it would fall into. I mean, because if it's not a year, our, our another current, year, because it's a. Our three year. through February twenty five, I think. Twenty six. Twenty six. Yeah, our funding will run out February twenty six. So if we got a new saver grant to extend those positions, it would start at the same time. Okay. But a year from now, even if we apply for a grant in, in March of 2025, mm -hmm. we won't know this time next year. Okay. Last year, last time we got it, it was like five months later. Okay. And they just decreased the amount of funding by $36 million. I don't know if you saw that article. Okay. okay. For a safer grant for a state. Yeah, but I don't know if we could apply for a necessary a safer grant. I think it has to be like a retention grant. It's a different one because it's you're keeping the employees safer was for like new you know new hire employees so miscellaneous income that's gone down significantly okay so the re okay this is easy to explain this is because most of that money is tied to those out of county assignments when we build the budget we make the assumption that we're not going to go on any out of county assignments even though that's probably not realistic it's very difficult to predict how much involvement those would be. So, so neither the revenue or the expenses for those are included in the okay. projected budget. So if we do participate in one, it requires budget amendments to record the revenue and the uh, expenses. Okay, understood. Uh, so that, that yeah, that's almost all related to the audit. Okay, and here's where we've got <clears throat> the cell site um, revenue coming in. Uh, yeah, so this is, uh, I did want to point out when you get to property taxes, so cell site revenue is all new, right? We yep. made a major adjustment this year, and you know it wasn't historically there. This property tax figure you see goes up just slightly. This is about about thirty thousand dollar impact of the fire fund because I removed what the hospital would have been paying, the fire fund's benefit of the hospital. Okay. So okay. that's still a not a known issue. Um, the county hasn't updated their forecast uh, to us yet, um, but uh, that that so this is a more conservative property tax estimate. Okay. Um, are there maybe, since we're losing that, are there any other projects that are coming on that possibly could make up for that? Uh, well, I wouldn't say it would make up for that, but because again, the hospital here, if we were receiving about $50,000, that means they were paying about a half a million dollars a year in property taxes. More than a half a million dollars a year in property taxes. So it would take a lot of. Like the hotel that's coming in. Is that... It will help. It won't make up for that. Yeah. But the hospital will get that exemption, I'm sure. Yeah, they, I think they will too. I mean, it's the, you know, it's um, Measure A, this is, we're real confident in these figures. Okay. Uh, uh, as far as income, I'm looked and I'm maybe missing it. Uh, where is the CFD fund? It's in the CFD fund. Okay, hard. Well, so no, is it well, is it supposed to come to it, fire it, it won't show up in this line item because the it'll show up in the summary of fund balance page. So the transfer is because remember that the, the request was that the, that money be set aside for future operations. Yes. None of that those balances, the, this these line item budgets don't show balances or even transfers between the funds. Because so we have the page. because we have the sell side revenue here. Was that a sell side revenue is supposed to go? In the summary page there? Well, because we said for cell site was for operating and not feature operating, correct? So, well, the, the as you'll see, you need that money now because of the loss of property taxes. Yeah. So that's why I didn't try to put that somewhere else. Yeah. But um, the it will show up. Again, we're still working on these, this page. This is, the, this is the most important page of the budget. You, don't, you haven't seen it yet. Mm -hmm. uh, but... It will show up as a transfer out of the CFD fund, okay. and then a transfer. It transfer into fire, fire future. So we could operations. add. So we could add what's it, AD. Yeah. Okay. So we could add CFD. And it'll be the whole balance. balance. It'll it, it'll end up being the, the entire fund balance. Eighty thousand. No, because we've built up over the past five years. That's already been transferred. It hasn't yet. 
has not been transferred. Right. I thought we then we do it during our budget amendment. I thought we did with that. We did that with the CF. We did that with the uh, sell site revenue. Okay. Then do that with the CFP. Yeah. Okay. Um. Sorry about that. No, no, no. It's all all good. Okay. So just hold that thought on the on the on the sell side revenue. When we get to the bottom, you can see if you if you take it out, what happens? Uh, <laughs> uh, um, to, um, <laughs> yeah, I know. I see what happens. Yeah. Um, like we put it in. <laughs> okay, we've got uh, you know this is this is the same people. No 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 new people in fire. Uh, same operations. No, this doesn't account for any um, out of county. Very concerned in the long term about overtime costs. Um, you know, we had the, this is an area that most fire departments get really get, can, can become very swollen. Uh, when we started the 24 hour operation, we had almost all new employees, very little leave banks. Overtime was very low because they weren't taking a lot of time off. That that's no longer the case. This is still a very this this is a number that's I'm not super confident in the 63 thousand bucks. It could swell. Um, well, all it takes is us losing well, a few I, I, firefighters. Yeah, not bad. even that. You're just calling in sick. Yeah, it's yeah. like you have two people, one going on, yeah. two going on vacation. Yeah, so you've got to backfill those right. those positions. So we make a sub. I mean, shouldn't it? Okay, so I thought the whole point of getting the uh, uh, the safer ground was we're going to have additional people, so that way we could cut down on the overtime because that was a big topic. But it's like Come position. Here. So like if yeah. you have a, a captain, yeah. two captains that go away yeah. on vacation, then one captain has to fill both well, two shifts. Maybe, well, yeah. maybe when that happens, because we have two models, right? Our original model without safer grant, and then we have our safer grant model so for, uh, for our, uh, our firefighters. So when something like that happens, maybe we should shift something to is it possible to go back so, to our original um so that would be not including the so what costs. ended up happening is is occasionally we've lost the third person on the shift but that's always been a reserve firefighter not one of the full-time employees so yeah. you've saved when you've saved money it's been the least expensive yes. person. so i mean that's what i'm saying if the one of the full-time firefighters needs to go then we just leave it empty and go to our original model because the whole point of safer ground was to reduce the overtime and that's how we, we justify you know we're saving money and things like that but i mean if we are afraid that this number is going to swell up to i'm just noting that it's vulnerable so there's i think a, i think because maybe, money. well i think i think there's an opportunity for maybe the fire committee to take a look at this to yeah. say how can they um minimize yeah overtime expense yeah um because to your point is, can they reshuffle things yeah. um, when there's somebody that calls in sick? Yeah. It's not like in the admin office, somebody calls in sick, it's like no harm, no foul. It's like you have to have the personnel on site with the fire department. Um, but I think it's a matter of how do you, yeah. you know, what, what changes and adjustments do you need to make? Maybe you could put that on the fire committee agenda. Yeah, so I would recommend that it go to the fire committee. Um, to we can talk about sort of just as a sort of an operational and staffing yeah. informational yeah. and see if there's interest in yeah I, I mean I um because you know it is, it is a huge expense. sick you're gonna pay them sick time but whoever's got to cover them you're still gonna have to pay them now they're gonna pay the and that's when you get yeah. the additional cost I don't think so that's operationally not... you can do anything because if you got somebody who's you know, you have to down, you have to downstaff in order. Well, to yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. Maybe we should. So do you that. run without a captain, yes. or do you run without a? Well, I think it's a model that yeah. gets kicked in. Yes, maybe we have to be flexible because I, I just the numbers. Well, the numbers, well, the numbers are huge. too high, and it's and it's not something we have control over. So it's a matter of saying how do we how do we manage I, that? I, I, just, I just wanted to note it because I think in the long term we. You're gonna to have to keep an eye on this overtime cost because yes, it, it yeah. can't it can't it can't swell. Now the 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 problem with the, when you try to compare it to the prior years, that's not those numbers are not a result of this problem that I'm mentioning. They're really a result of the out of county assignments. That's why they got so big. This sixty three grand is only deals with the expected overtime, not the out of county stuff. So that's too much. Okay, so right, that's been wasn't... noted to have the fire committee take a look at that. Yeah. Okay. Um, uh, reserve uh, firefighters. This is where we saved the money when we went to the third, the, the safer grant. You see, the we used to fund a, a 
well, about almost two hundred thousand dollars worth, and now it's down to about one sixty five because we're not covering as many hours with reserve firefighters as we did prior to the implementation of the Saber Grant. Uh, we have less. We used to have one reserve firefighter on duty twenty four hours a day and one twelve hours a day. You know, we've eliminated those twelve hour a day with coverage. Um, let's see. What else do I want to highlight? So PERS. Anything else? Oh, the CAL FIRE dispatch, because we just got to build that one up, too. Yeah, dispatch cost. Oh, that one up. The vehicle o &M has been pretty uh, volatile over the last few years. Yeah. Um, so this 45 grand is like just nothing major happening going wrong. Doesn't look like anything else there. And then on the ugly one. <laughs> yeah. See, so got uh, allocation of uh, admin costs. Yeah, I mean, this is based on an update to the you know you know we the that model we have the admin uh, admin cost is based on last year's actuals. So we've updated that figure and and, and it was, I mean, so it's in twenty two twenty three was one hundred thirty two thousand. Then I know we changed it went to two seventy three, and now at three twenty one, that's fifty thousand dollar increase over one year and. What is the justification for that? I mean, the percentages didn't change. You don't know. The percentage did change. Okay. So, uh, but because the, the, the fire fund but has okay, grown. Well, yeah, uh, okay. But it was, but I mean, I mean $50,000 additional going to admin fund, that's a lot of money. And I don't know. Maybe we need to revisit our policy for how we allocating admin costs. Um, I don't know if this is going to continue to increase, but we can't afford it. I mean, I know through ad hoc committee, we, we sat down and we looked at things, but it just, especially since we lost some revenue for the, um, for the, um, from the, uh, in the hospital. I mean, you just look at the numbers, it's just, we're going backwards still. And even though we added, <laughs> So, so that it's a slippery slope. Yeah, it's like, when are we going to win? Well, <laughs> it's, 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 it's not. It's not. You're you're still. If you go to the bottom line, we're about twenty five thousand dollars to the good. Yeah, but, but that's but, using one hundred percent of the uh, of the sell site revenue. So if you took that away, yeah. if that didn't exist, would it be, would be you know roughly sixty thousand negative in the hole. Yeah. So that, that, that yeah. So I mean, we're not. Yeah, and uh, things are, I know things are going to get worse over the next, you know, because that's the, you know, what is shown that the costs are going to, my expenses are going to outpace the revenue. So I was hoping that with what we had added, I guess you haven't, you said you haven't put in the um, uh, CFD fund. So that's going to at least cover us. Bring us. Yeah. I mean, so again, that, that'll show up in the. But, but looking at the other funds, the administrative costs, I mean, if you look at water, the wastewater, it actually went down $20,000. If you look at the water fund, it increased by $21,000. And then I think what was... And then if you look at... Drainage fund went down, and you want to make copy? Can we just make uh, yeah. copies because that, that is last year's too, right? No, part is that one that doesn't have last year. No. So, oh, okay, I have let's just make a copy of this too. Then, okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I just uh, it's, it's just we're not making any, we're, we're doing stuff. But on the back end, yeah, we're, we're losing, losing it. Money. Yeah, yeah, I mean, this is so amazing. it's not it's not addressing the problem. Three hundred twenty one thousand from the fire fund, and then this is a policy that we've set ourselves. I mean, yeah. you know, like 
I guess the for the water fund part, uh, obligated or I mean, I well, no, I mean, you use this policy to to yeah. protect yourself to show that yeah, there is the, a methodology. There's a methodology in that way. If it's but challenged, it can be you are in a position to defend yourself. And my understanding is with that uh, allocation, the study it didn't didn't really study. Our, our specific funds in detail. They ended up just using a general um, model. Yeah, what the study did was divide the costs by the prior year's expenses. And so that funds that grow are going to pick up higher percentage of funds that shrink over time will pick relative which, to one another. Which part of that is in that the safer grant? Part of this is the, a little part of this is so, the safer grant. A little bit of it? Like how much of it? Well, last year there was only probably forty grand or something of this whole thing. Yeah, but, but oh, this... of the of the of the three twenty one. Yeah, I mean a small amount. I mean last year, last year's expenses. So I think if the safer ground wasn't was one point eight million dollars in the fire fund of the of that safer ground only maybe forty grand would have been. I'm talking about I'm talking about twenty two twenty three. Uh huh. So so like so if we took the safer ground out. Of the equation, what would the allocation of admin cost would be for for fire? The the reason I'm asking that was because we accepted the um, safer grant, and then after that we changed the allocation. So, I mean, I kind of feel it's like really not hitting us that much yet. Because this year's forecast is based on Last year. two fiscal years ago's or fiscal year 22-23's actual expenses, not the not the current years. So, this so the safer grant only affected us from February to sixty seven thousand was the safer grant proceeds in 22-23. Now next year it's gonna jump to two hundred and ten. The next year, two forty. So, so the next two coming years yes. will be even, will be even larger. So how much of it? So that means that that number. So this three twenty one is even going to get larger. And well, quite, depending on if, I mean, if the other funds stay relative, which then yes. So and it would go. So if it's going from, I'm sorry, you said it was ninety thousand. And it went to two ten. Oh, went uh, from sixty seven. Sixty seven to two ten. Two ten. So, so it's going and to then so. the next, and then this year it's two forty three. So okay, so that's a hundred fifty thousand dollar increase, which means it will go like if these numbers stay relative. So twenty two percent of the hundred fifty thousand will be an increase. Oh no, it's, it's, no. The, the hundred the, if you look at this this figure this is uh, this the six point one million dollars that's what's being divided up to create the percentage so if it's two hundred thousand dollars of that it's what three percent or so of so, so three percent but then three percent of admin allocation costs which which total about one point two million dollars three percent so that forty thousand. But again, some of it you've already you're already seeing. Um, so the, I mean, so obviously there's going to be a, it goes, but it all depends. It depends on what these actual costs are for the other funds because this this column is comes off of yeah. your last year's final finalized financial statements, operating expenses. So if other funds, like I think five or ten years from now. This this will mellow out because we know we're going to have increases in costs at the wastewater plant and in the water fund for the projects that you the operating costs of the projects that you envision right we're going to uh, well, but in the short term those funds are are stable right they have not those costs haven't gone up and the fire fund is where you've seen big cost increases yeah, the problem is another five or ten years till things mellow out I don't know if we're going to have a fire department I mean we're only the twenty five thousand dollars. I mean, for a fire fund to have only well, given the uh, cost of the operation, yeah, it, it's not. It's, it's, it's yeah, even though we're not, in the good, but it's I mean, not. Enough. We have a major expense or thing. It, it's gone. I mean, twenty five thousand is nothing. Oh, you mean the, the fund balance? Yeah. The, the, yeah. the surplus. Yeah, yeah. 
the 40,000. Yeah. So, doesn't, well, doesn't leave any room for any kind of. If you have an emergency, just keep in mind that we're controlled by the device. Again, you're missing the yeah. most important part. Which the asset the balance. No, not the balance. So the fire fund has a balance. It'll start the year the balance of about five hundred thousand dollars. It has a reserve of about four hundred right now. This year, four hundred ninety-two thousand. So if you have an emergency, you can absorb that emergency in the in, within the fund. Uh, but if your ongoing expenses increase, that's where the problem lies. Because if, if your costs go up and they stay up, you know you don't have a lot of wiggle room. You know, we don't. Yeah. You know, anything comes up. Any any ongoing expenses. So that's why I caution you about to say overtime. That can creep up and become an ongoing yeah, exactly. expense. That that said, that overtime would just eat that up. Or vehicle maintenance that continue to climb. Oh yeah. Uh, uh, those those kind of yeah. But no doubt, this is a significant. I mean, this is kind of what we these these numbers actually came out to pretty close to what we had forecasted in December uh, to the ad hoc committee in terms of what we thought these would end up being. Um, so yeah, the, the fire fund. I mean, they're, they're, these numbers just tied to the the, the prior year's so, actual expenses. So like the fund total went from down from one hundred thousand to twenty five. Project. But now just remember that hundred uh, the hundred thousand has you know like all the miscellaneous income of the, 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 fires, the fires that we went you know oh, out of county yes yeah I mean that's a hundred thousand so, so the original yeah and the original budget let me just this doesn't help us with that the so original if we budget have those out of county then that we will up a little and bit. we don't have the CFD revenue in here either no, that's in there yeah wow. so the last year this time when you when you approved the budget. Um, that would have been ugly. So when you a year ago, the fund, the projected um, surplus for the fund for, for last year was thirty seven thousand dollars. Yeah. So and actually, so if versus, we, if, okay, versus, yeah. Okay. So it's about the same. So the good thing is, is having the sell side revenue put in here. As it turns out, it was very yeah. fortunate for this fund because we did not anticipate that. Well, because if you if you took that out and look at the results, we would be yeah the reverse. Oh, just remember, we knew going into this that costs would, uh, you know, we had this we had this surplus at the beginning of Measure A, and it will get it's going to get tougher over time. So, yeah, the CFD revenues, it's going to be key. Yeah. All right. Any other comments on fire funds? No. All right. So this is a good segue okay. to uh, CFD fund. I just want to make sure. Was there any of these? Uh, we, there are a number of one-time expenses: the three right. replacement chainsaws, yeah. cabinet, uh, and hose, and type for an engine. That's four hundred. The deposit. Yeah, yeah. that will get that money back. Through. Well, you probably we're going to get seventy-five percent back. Yeah. yeah. But, it's come, but it comes from. The, but that's uh, a big chunk. That's uh, it again. comes from the. Uh, capital. capital, yeah. So it's yeah. not operation, yeah, not operations. Yeah. Uh, oh, the station alert alerting system. This is something the chief would like that that uh, that's wired into the radio dispatch radios and alerts the bedrooms. Right now, we we move this this captain's bedroom down here, and this is not alarmed. So they're relying on like the radio to open, and sometimes the the captain's not waking up. So that that's what that's for. And then replacing the HVAC system. Yeah, that's for the upstairs. Yeah, we we had we repaired it. It's due for replacement, but we haven't replaced it. Well, I mean, the thoughts was if we were never going to, if we were going to abandon that space and move put that two story addition in, then maybe that wouldn't be necessary. Oh, yeah, but I mean, based on our conversation, I thought we may just do that anyways, right? We're going to remodel and put it one story, and we'll see. Yeah, we'll see how this all shakes out. But that's if. If that unit dies on uh, June 10th, and the other ship was working, we need, to re we need to replace it. Okay, Okay. let's move on to the um, CFD. We've got uh, a couple more here to review before five. So CFD revenue, um, we need a need discussion on this. No, that's very straightforward. So I think what you expected about 80 grand, right? Okay, yep. All right, street lights. This is all straightforward. Do, yeah, there is one of the streetlight uh, areas that cannot afford its full, you know, we can't charge more than what the engineers, the, the, the original assessment amount plus the CPI allows. So what that means is we can cover the direct costs, but not the indirect, the admin allocation portion in that section. Um, so uh, 
you'll see uh, that one of the revenue, you know, that, that that's uh, that really only affects the admin allocation uh, component of that that portion. This is all just like last year. Yeah. All right. And then parks and recreation. This is the area you want to spend some more time on. Yes. Um, so okay, we got uh, re revenues are um, we reorganized revenues a little bit. Uh, we've added this fundraising income because there was this used to be just part of our pro what we called sort of standard program income. So now when you see program income, that's things that we control like concerts at the park, scoot camp, skater camp, skate camp, etc. The fundraising income is living the dream, the beer run. Mm -hmm. Those are activities that right now are being headed up by TRF. So for the forty thousand that we have budgeted. Do we have a guarantee from TRF? No. So there's no guarantee? No guarantee. So we're just going based on historically what we've received? Yes. And that's Do we have any, any arrangement with TRF that the fundraiser that they're planning, that we are going to get revenue from that? I mean, so they, I know they can. can. I, I want to say we have a commitment from them. Uh, nothing like a guarantee. Um, nothing in writing? There's no agreement in writing between the district and TRF. Uh, the, uh, and we don't even know if we could use the money the way we want to because- uh, Well, it's programmed that way, but yeah, they would like to probably, it sounds like they'd like to have more control of how it gets spent. How we spend the money, so- uh, But, or, 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 or for specific, specific well, I don't purposes. I know we could yeah. do that. How can we even put it in there? Well, if that's how it's listed now, and I guess we broke it out so it can at least be separate, but- but If they wanted to go to a specific project, it's that kind of they in the Adam County. Up. So they come up with the project that they want us to put that money towards. And maybe it's a twenty thousand dollar project. Yeah, yeah. And then they yeah, and it's something that we don't know or they haven't planned and it hasn't been communicated to us. So I don't know how we could put it in our general fund if we don't know how how we even allowed to spend the money. Yeah, I mean that's the kind of the first I heard. Uh, only recently did I hear there might be some strings attached. Uh, we've in the past used this money for operating. Yeah, yeah. So I mean, that's the, the, actually the program was developed because we had a deficit in the fund, I mean, not for a specific you think fundraiser or, you or you think maybe uh, you need to have a meeting with TRF to find out exactly what's going on before we put that in the our general fund. If we can't spend it, I don't want to have it in there. Well, you can remove it. I'm and recommending we remove it because if they are going to go with project specific um, items, um, then one of the the reason we put left it in there be, is because I was originally when this concept came about, I was told that TRF's goal would be to to fund the district to the level that we had budgeted. But beyond that, they might want to do something else with the, with the funds and not just give, gift it, that's the wrong term, but not just award it back to TCSD. And so I didn't want to come into the year with, with no expectation because I want to illustrate that, look, we did expect $40,000 okay. in fundraising. Okay. Right. But, but you could remove it if there's going to be strings attached that are beyond, you know, where it's not as, you don't have as much um, discretion about how it gets spent. Uh, you know, that'll have to be addressed. I think I think if it's left in here, then that expectation shows needs to be communicated. Yeah, so we have this expectation. Yeah. Yeah, that, that was why we wanted to break okay. it up. Yeah. Then I'm okay with that, but I think that communication is going to be key. Yeah. Um, okay. Uh, let's see. And that the 40000 is for operating expenses. Yeah, because ultimately we're using our staff for programs. And well, to attend their meetings. Well, yeah. I mean, well, and staff, the, partner rec staff do help at those events too. Yeah, they yeah. Do, they yeah. Do so them. it's an offset of yeah. the salary yeah. cost. Yeah. 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 I mean, the, yeah, they're spending time. Yeah, if, if all the proceeds were tied to specific things in that operation, we'd, be, we'd actually be expending money to hold the events. Yeah. Like, yeah. For yeah. the year run and, and certainly living the dream. It's a, it's a, now I don't know how it's going to shake out, but in the past, it's been a very labor intensive program yeah. to put on. I mean, uh, well, it, it seems like they're yeah. hiring, from what I read, they're hiring. So I'm sorry, yeah. yeah. which is yeah. going to raise the expenses, yeah. which could lower the net proceeds. Yeah. But again, we don't know how okay. that's going to shake out. But okay, so yeah, I mean, I just want to make sure that that's communicated that we expect that money and we should be able to use it for operating, for expenses. operating the rest. That could, you know, 
um, the property taxes, this has that same um, slight deduction. I think in, the, in this case, it wasn't nearly as significant as, it wasn't as much money as in the fire. Yeah, but they, 000, yeah maybe it was 13,000. I can't remember the exact amount. We, and we reduced our, our forecast. Um, let's see. No, uh, on the way, okay, so here's where the, some, some new, here's where I want to, uh, on the salary side, um, so we've had a real, for about seven years, we've had a challenge with parks maintenance, you know, um, and I'll rewind the clock, tw 25 years ago, 30 years ago, we had a utility operator who was in that role for a very long time assigned to parks maintenance, did a fantastic job. He was paid though, like a utility operator, not parks maintenance workers, a higher wage position. The district had uh, identified a, 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 that, that because the parks were struggling, an opportunity to save money was to pay it at a more comparable parks maintenance level. And so when that individual retired, we backfilled at the parks maintenance level. Uh, we've had an incredibly difficult time recruiting for that position for a number of reasons. Uh, Hiring and maintaining that position. Matter of fact, we just lost our first, we just lost that person again. Um, over the year, over the last few years, as we've been able to you know, increase the, the revenue into the Parks and Recreation Fund, we've pushed more resources to parks maintenance. And about a year and five months ago, we brought on a, a second person, a halftime person. Well, that person also left us a couple months ago. We, we, have, we have that person's replacement starting, I think, Monday, Monday, Monday thankfully. Um, but there's been this inconsistency. Uh, every time we have a gap, we're sending um, utilities. utility operators to cover at a higher cost. And the gaps can take months to get it, to get refilled. Additionally, whenever there's a shortage in labor, we're sending utility operators to, to backfill, not even a gap. And those costs are being coded to parks when that occurs. So if you look, for example, right, for the under salaries for the current year, we had a budget of 253000 252000 and we spent, we're, we're forecast to spend about two sixty three. That is essentially because we've had more utility operators doing work out the parks than was originally expected. Now, we, we took on some big projects like leveling out the fields where it takes lots of manpower, um, you know, lots of people, lots of equipment to do. What, what this budget proposes right now is to add a, uh, uh, so we have two options. The, the current, the, the status quo, which you don't see, would be to maintain that single parks maintenance worker and maintain a half-time, essentially, second parks maintenance worker part-time position and still account for utility operator assistance. We, um, we realize we have uh, um, enough money that we could actually go to, two parks maintenance worker full-time positions with the hope that we then reduce the amount of times we have gaps and can free up some utility operator time. So the all these other, the water and sewer budgets, for example, assumed that, that we had two full-time parks maintenance workers. This wage level here assumes two full-time parks uh, maintenance workers. If you don't wish to add that, then we, we can remove it um, it's about thirty thousand dollars in total ex costs above the one full time and one part time, and then we'd have to bring back some labor from you end up with some savings in water and wastewater because we know they're going to end up working more in the parks. So there'll be some minor changes to water and wastewater if that occurs. So what the salary does again is go from right now we have one full time and one part time. Both of which are we've lost here just in the last two months. All of our investment, we're we're not able to to we don't you know these are positions that pay under thirty bucks an hour, and we're not able to keep people very so long. How much do we pay for utility workers? Well, it's just it's a little bit difficult. It depends it, on the use yeah, it's, there. it's a lot more complicated than that because. So you, you, um, the, it's on schedule. Well, so we have a utility worker and utility operator classification that starts out at twenty one forty two and tops out at forty for, for a senior utility operator forty six seventy six. Big variance. They make a lot more money because they work. They do. They can work these um, the on call shifts. They're on call, and so they get paid for weekends and 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 
returning to work, and the parks guys don't in terms of total compensation. So is it possible to hire a utility worker, have them mainly work on the parks, and then they could get the additional money for if they're kind of being called for uh, water and sewer, so that they could, you know, so we hire them at a little lower lower range, but then they have opportunity to make more money if they're on call for So we probably sewer. wouldn't put them on call until it became proficient. And if they're assigned in the utility, because we don't really have a lot of parks yeah. needs. So, I mean, so it's really about proficiency. They need to be able to operate all the wells. They need yeah. to have all the certifications. They're not going to get the, they're not going to be able to obtain that if they're working in the parks because you have to work thousands of hours at the wastewater plant to qualify for to be to the wastewater certificate. Yeah, they're very distinct. And then, and then the rate would keep going up with every certificate yeah. and they get and you're really just taking up. I think the if we were to try to what we could do, I mean so so what this and by the way, we put this together before we knew we were losing a parks maintenance worker. And so at the time our thought was we've had to be desperate when we've hired the parks maintenance workers over the last seven years. I would guess that. Huh? And we're desperate again. Well, so no, when I say desperate, I mean we've had to hire the last man standing essentially because yeah. there were we run out of applicants. So the applicants are they younger, older? All over um, the place, mostly younger. Younger, yeah, because I would think that. So how, they, how about raising the sound? So, so I think we have two options. So when I said, um, and I know we're running out of time, but this is the most important thing I want to talk to you about. Um. When we put this plan together, it we felt like it was worth considering because we didn't feel like when we would go to recruit for this position, we would be desperate because we already have a full time maintenance work staff that we can afford to be picky and wait till the right person comes along. That's really not the case. You could have a senior parks maintenance worker, more of an experienced person that has a better wage schedule that hopefully would stay a longer time. Yes. And then also have the costs are going to yeah. go up even higher. Um, but we have the money now. The so you, you have, yeah, you have the so you have the park, funds. park maintenance is crucial. We have kids that are going to be playing on those. They don't want injuries, and you know when we drive by our parks, we want to see. Yeah, ice. there are the funds. Yeah, so I mean there is money in there, and that's you know what they should be used for. The fund is like hundred forty three thousand. So you could take in what 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 do you estimate another ten? I mean, I'd have to do some work to, to put something together, so but yeah, we could, we could develop a yeah. a, a, a another yeah. and fill both those roles. Yeah. And so is it the part time position that's going vacant or the full time full -time. or both full time? Imagine you're saying it's under the status quo right now. Yeah, we've lost both. We have zero right. We have zero people. We I'm sorry. Our our full time person's last day is next Friday. Our part time person left. Uh, in March, and the new one starts tomorrow. Yeah, it starts Monday. Yeah, we're gonna have one week of both people. Okay, what, what was the reason for them leaving? Money, which one uh, for the full time? He got a job as a groundskeeper at Cal Poly. So that was probably more. Yeah, I, I'm telling you, I cannot, I, I, yeah. I've, I've, I've very little confidence I can fill these positions. Um, one, our health benefits are not competitive, these are people who have families. Yeah, they can't come here because we don't provide a family plan, we don't provide enough. So, I had multiple people last over the last two times who were qualified working at school districts and whatnot, they say, you know, no, I can't leave, I can't leave these benefits. Yeah. Yeah. Because we're not family. We don't uh, cover, we don't cover more than two persons on the health plan. Two parts. So the per oh, that they, they spouse, put 700 yeah. bucks out of pocket to get a family on the phone. Yeah. And you're making 20, 20, and you're making 20, 20 bucks an hour. Yeah. No, yeah. Yeah. it doesn't work. So even if we raise the, but I don't think we we'd be able to afford it. So, I mean, no, that, that you could afford it. No, we could afford making two full time positions. Yeah, but one of them, if it's at a senior level, I think it's a level or, but if it's the benefits, that's the issue. It's, well, it's both. But I'm I'm just giving you the read for some of the rationale why we've had people turn the job down. Um, it's hard to say because you don't know who you don't get to talk to. Yeah. Uh, I try to be very forthcoming about our wage, and there's no like yeah, hitting, yeah. nothing's being hit. It's all very matter of fact. And so I'm thinking that a, a lot of the folks won't ever apply unless they can see that the wages are going to be what they expect yeah. or the benefits can be what they expect. And so we don't know who we're not, not getting. Uh, I just know that this has been a struggle for seven years yeah. in terms of being able to, you know, we've probably recruited five times yeah. for this position. So, so currently this number that you have in there includes two full time. Yes. So I would say even increase that by a little bit more because obviously we have the money 
to try to get a senior uh, park main for uh, park maintenance. Uh, so with a little bit more wages and hopefully maybe they have their spouses that have health insurance or something and they see that their wage is a little bit more, maybe they'll, you know, we'll get somebody that could stay longer. So is there enough work for two full-time people? Oh, yeah. Because I would rather well, say if we put the money towards the full-time position, the senior, and getting more wages... Mm -hmm. Versus, you know, is there work for two people to do? Okay, so what I can say is we did this with one person eight years ago, between 25 and eight years ago, and it worked and it went really, it worked out really well. We had this really de devoted, dedicated person. And since then, we've added 50% more participants in soccer. Yes. We've added flag yes. football that never used to exist. Yes. So the wear and tear in the fields is much, much so there's more. more. There's more. Yeah. Work that Everything's work. older. Irrigation lines break. I couldn't tell you though that it's a hundred percent more. It's it's more. But there's work enough work. So I don't want to have it where we make two full time positions, but there's not enough work for those two positions. Because I'd rather say leave one full time, one half time. Pay the more problem money. is that they have the part time folks. We're never going to be able to keep very long. Um, you know, that's well, because if you can take and put more money towards both the one, uh, the one and a half uh, employees versus taking it saying, okay, now we're going to just make two positions, you don't have enough money then that's going to the one and a half. I mean, I, I, I could see if we could keep someone long term and then the second person who's uh, lower level full time, at least when they leave. You have somebody yeah, to train right. them. Yeah, and the, the, the consistency, yeah. the gaps. Or every them. time, yeah. yeah, every time we have this gap, the yeah. the, the field maintenance problems become worse. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Further behind. Exactly. Yeah. And then yeah. if yeah. the senior person leaves, then but if we can do one and a half, then we can pay more to both. But I mean, I mean, at this wage levels, I mean, we're just talking five or ten thousand dollars, and I think we have the money. I mean, you could see the. The franchise fee by itself, you know, it's gone up seven, eight thousand dollars. So, and that seems to be increasing. Um, so, I don't know. I'm I'm open to doing two. So, what's time. Melissa's recommendation? To add this, to, well, okay. Um, as of a week ago, it was to add a before we lost our full time person, it was to add a second person. So to go two full time two employees. Full -time. Okay. Okay, so, so I agree with that. two full time. I'm even okay with having one you know, senior hires. Yeah, yeah. I mean, because park maintenance is important, and you know, and uh, as you mentioned, we uh, pro our programs are using. Well, we're trying to keep them. Yeah, our pro yeah, our programs are using a lot of the the fields. I mean, this could mean maybe the parks and rec department, uh, the committee needs to look at our fees and realize that what's happening with our parks and maybe the fees need to change a, uh, a little bit to compensate for maintenance of these parks. But at least, I mean, I don't think we should let our parks fall apart. So, so do we want to come up with a wage? Yeah, I would first before, or do you want me to just put in like ten or twelve thousand? Yeah, I think I'll I'll guesstimate what it'll okay. be, but then we're going to need to go do a study to because I I can't have this person come in out of whack, right? That, with everybody else within the district, because it can create lots of other imbalances. Yeah, yeah. So we need to go back and look at the cities, the, the places we compare ourselves to, and line it up at ninety five percent of the median or something. So yeah. so it's along the same lines. Yeah. And, but we can plug in for a placeholder Correct. Um, the funds necessary to, to fund that. Actually, I'm not even that worried about it because by the time we get all this done, it, it, yeah. we won't, it won't be July 1st. Yeah. Um, so before we can you know, we'll have a lot of work. Okay, so I think we've got consensus on that. We'll go from 1.5 uh, to 2 uh, in a senior position. Everything else is good. Uh, what costs are up there? They were up everywhere. I didn't point it out. Um, uh, yeah, workman's comp has gone up. Yeah, um, I think everything up. else in here was, yeah. there really weren't any. Even... And then the one time expense is very minor. Yeah, parks, yeah, yeah this is a little trailer. Oh, yeah. So, what we get, yeah, okay. Yeah, just a little small. There doesn't look like there's anything. Yeah. But you're right, we have about 100, and, let's just say that ends up being 10 grand in wage difference, or, or no, it'll be more than that, a little more. But um, you still have like 100. And, Thirty thousand dollars. Yeah, and if you go up five dollars, that's two thousand dollars an hour. I mean, two thousand hours yeah. in a year. Yeah, 10, that's ten thousand. So yeah. 
So if we move, we change that to three hundred thousand dollars, should be good share by the buyers. All right. All right. So moving on, uh, any other comments on person one? No. It's nice to see their. Uh, oh yeah, the budget <laughs> is a little healthier than what it has been in the past. So that's oh, yeah. Um, our next item on the agenda it's is just future, the agenda. future agenda items. Yeah, I don't. Um, uh, actually, I need to. Add, next time you meet, we should well, we should review the strategic financial policies because we have this 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 committee supposed to review them annually. Uh, looks like that we have something coming for the meeting. Yeah. Okay, so we should. Yeah, you're, uh, you're welcome. This is a public meeting. You're welcome to come on. Meet. Come on in. Where's the association meeting? It's probably here. here. Oh, we're just wrapping up a meeting, but that's okay. You're. It's a public meeting. It's a public welcome. meeting. Um. Strategic so financial policies. Yeah. Um. Uh. We've had this committee uh, uh, meet with the auditors at the end of the, the audit oh, work. Right. So that'll be like in probably uh, October-ish. Mm -hmm. But you might recall that they're going to be here doing field work in June. I believe it was June 6th. June 5th. And, June 5th. June 5th. and so June 5th. did we set up a time for when they're meeting with them? I don't know how to. I sent, the, I I sent time. the times that you guys were available to them. Okay. I don't think so I sent any time during that. No, day. no, no. I sent it to them. So, uh, well, oh. Jeff, I think at said that you were available like late morning. Yeah, I. What was it? June sixth. Fifth. Fifth. So this will not be a committee meeting, and nor will there be a need to meet with them together. Yeah. But they. I just thought they wanted to meet with a board member or two, and I think it makes sense for it to be okay. you because you are going to meet with them again later on. So once, um, so you're giving that to the auditors. So is there going to be? Further communication to say this is the time. If I hear something from them, okay, because yeah. I don't have anything on my calendar just yet because okay. I'm waiting for the time. Well, I, I told them for you like 11 because I think okay. you had something later. It wasn't June 6th, like, I think it was June, June, June 5th. 5th. Yeah, Fifth. yeah, because I have the water resource um, advisory committee meeting at 1 30 in slow. Okay, so um, preferably it would be the morning, right? But I just need to know what time. Okay. Okay. When I hear. Um, so, um, can we also talk about the source control program with who? I mean, would that be appropriate for? And because I'm concerned about the dollar amount that we're putting there. Maybe that's something for the facility. I mean, if, if it's about the program. So let's let's talk. To, let's defer that to the facilities. Um, I think that would be appropriate. And then we have one on the fire. Yeah, and then um, yeah, OT to the fire department. Okay. Uh, anything else? I, I don't know of anything. Okay. No. Good, right. good job, you guys. Yeah, thank, thank you. you so and much. a lot of work on the budget. So That's thank you. Amazing. All right. Budget. Well, then we'll adjourn the meeting at uh, 447. Okay. You're early.